so I saw a thread about the creepiest things you've ever done. But it got me thinking, what's the creepiest thing that's ever happened to you? When I was 16 I started working at McDonald's. One night I was working until 10pm, one of my coworkers had gotten off at 7 and was waiting in the car. Around 10.10 I go start my car and started waiting for my car to defrost. This guy gets out of his car that he's been waiting in and says forget something and then starts scraping the ice of my windows. He finishes, I mumble thanks. Then he just stares at me. He looks like he wants to say something but I just get in the car and head home. He follows, which I don't freak out about because he lives on the same highway I do. Whatever. I pull into my driveway. So does he what the fuck. I decide to run into the house. Hey Kalaska. Wait. Stop. I stop. He grabs my both my elbows. Pushes me against the car and says, will you go to the prom with me? I say no. He refuses to let me leave until I say yes. I decide to accept his invitation and then call him tomorrow and cancel when he's not freaking me out. I didn't cancel. We started dating. Now we are happily married. It's still a faking creepy way to ask someone out, but now it's a cute how we met story. Edit. He read my comment and is saying it wasn't this creepy. But yes, yes it was. I love you bud. My girlfriend is a sleepwalker. It only really comes on when she's incredibly exhausted or stressed out. We had just come back from Tokyo, first night back in our bed. I got up to take a leak, and when I turned around, she was standing in the door, eyes semi-open but glazed over, face slack. She surprised me, but I thought she just needed to use the bathroom. But she just stood there, and wouldn't let me pass, until I spoke to her. Hey. We have to get out of here, they're coming for us. The hairs on my neck immediately stood up. The way she said it was so cold and mechanical, it was like it wasn't even her voice. That's when I realized she was sleepwalking. Go back to bed. Okay. And she spun around and shuffled off to bed. I know it doesn't sound like much, but it was so creepy. It's like she was possessed. I didn't even get back in the bed with her. I went into the living room and slept on the couch. A few years ago a show ran called Crime Investigation Australia which was a surprisingly well made series about famous Australian killers in the process of bringing them to justice. I got really into it and spent a lot of time ruminating about how horrible it would be to be kidnapped and murdered, knowing you were powerless to stop it because they had tied you up or something. Well, cut to me waking up in a daze, completely disorientated and with no idea where I was. I look around, and I'm in a blank white box with no doors or windows. Sound starts to filter into my head, and I realize I can hear a roaring car engine. The car takes a turn, and I slam into the wall of the box. It hits me. I'm being faking kidnapped. I start pounding on the walls, and screaming for help. After less than a minute the car grinds to a halt and I hear footsteps moving along the side of the vehicle. A camouflage door opens, and a policewoman is standing there with a stern look on her face. Turns out I blacked out at an end of Exum's party, and passed out on the sidewalk, before I got home. Two lovely policewomen stuck me in a paddy wagon, and spent the next hour driving me around trying to find my house. My ID still said I lived in a dorm, but I'd moved off six months earlier and the as there had no idea of my new address. My kidnapping was just me coming to in the back of the paddy wagon. In the end, they got through to one of my friends on my phone, one of the few who weren't a sheet face to say my address, and dropped me back at my place. Considering it would have saved them masses of time and hassle just to throw me in the drunk tank overnight, I was hugely grateful and sent their station a very sincere thank you letter. Not really to me exactly, but I was very much involved. My first year in college I started dating this ridiculously beautiful girl in my program. I had kind of stolen her from another guy also in the program, but didn't think too much of it at first, they had been only casually dating. A mutual friend of ours tells me that this guy is very angry at me plans to kick my ass, and blah blah blah, nothing happens and I forget about the whole thing. One day a few weeks later she calls me, very distraught and tells me that, while she was out, someone had broken into her place and stolen only a few pairs of her underwear. The thief had climbed in through her second story window, a very challenging feat to say the least. 
The strangest thing was she lived with two other fantastic looking women from whom nothing was stolen. The thief even left the house without grabbing one of the many laptops, cameras and other valuables lying around the house. Needless to say she was very upset and stayed with me for about a week. The landlord had bars installed on the windows and the police got involved, and a sketch of the perp was even made from some stuff the neighbors had seen. Then, a few weeks later, just around the time we have sort of forgotten about the whole fiasco, it happens again, only this time the guy had pried off the bars of the window and done the exactly the same thing, taking a few pieces of her underwear and some bras and nothing else. At this point she doesn't know what to do, the cops are no closer to finding out who is doing this, so she pretty much moves into my place for security. After some time things settle down, and we move on. She starts to feel safe again, and we never hear from the thief again. Eventually we break up, become friends, I graduate and yada yada yada. Fast forward one year, a good friend of mine, who is a girl, who has no relation at all to, and has never even met, the girl mentioned above confesses to me, that when she was young, like 7 or so, she was sexually molested by a family friend and their 3 sons. This is obviously very hard on her, and I'm the first person she has ever told etc. Well, turns out that one of the sons who had done the molesting is the same dude who I snaked the girl from back in college. So instantly my mind starts piecing together the portrait of a deranged panty sniffing child molester ex-lover out for my blood and my ex-girlfriend's underpants. I have never told anyone the connection between these two separate events and have no idea what to do about it. I'm sworn to secrecy with both girls about this info as it's pretty serious stuff. That guy still walks among us, I see him every once in a while, but have no idea what to say slash do as I have no proof. TLDR, my life becomes the center of a huge theft slash panty sniffing slash child molestation conspiracy. While in college I came back to my apartment one afternoon to find some girl I didn't know in my living room. This wasn't all that unusual, as my roommates often had visitors at all hours, and she said she knew at least one of them. After some casual banter she announced she needed to go grocery shopping, and she offered to cook me dinner if I went with her and helped her out. She was kind of cute, so I decided to walk with her and see what happened. At the supermarket she asked me what I wanted to eat, and then invited me to her place where she cooked a meal for us. After dinner we had set through the night into the wee hours. Taking a break from sexy times, we talked about random stuff. One of the things we talked about was a local guy our age who had apparently killed his parents and disappeared. The guy's whereabouts were at that time still unknown, and there was a massive policeman and going on to locate him. Well, at one point the girl said I don't think he did it. She sounded so sure of this that I asked why she thought that when all the news stories strongly suggested his guilt. To my shock she said, because he is slash was my boyfriend. I realized then that I was in the bed of the girlfriend of a murderer at large. I didn't sleep the rest of the night for fear that a killer was going to jump out of a closet and hack me to bits. The next morning I politely excused myself and racked my brain the entire way back to my place about how and if I should distance myself from this person. On the one hand, she was attractive, cooked a nice meal, and seemed to want to have sex with me, a big plus. On the other hand, she might have a jealous boyfriend who liked to kill people. The if part was answered when I got to my apartment to find my roommates all gathered in the living room. They'd been wondering where I'd been. Turns out some girl had seen me on the street and followed me home a day or so before, then come back and more or less invited herself in. The girl they were talking about was the girl who I had spent the night with. So the girlfriend of a murderer at large had stalked me and seduced me. She confirmed this a couple days later, when I finally worked up the nerve to talk to her again, for the last time. The ex was found some weeks later he had indeed killed his family and a couple more people along the way before he was captured. I posted one creepy thing that had happened, but I thought I would post my father creepiest. Note, I was 13 at the time, it was late at night, and I have always had a wild imagination. My old bedroom faces the door at the top of our stairs, and into my parents bedroom one night my mom was at work and dad was visiting my grandmother, so I was in my room, listening to Backstreet Boys or something, and heard someone coming up the stairs, we don't lock our doors in our neighborhood. 
when I looked, it was my dad, in his usual PJS I said goodnight, but he never faced me, just went into the bedroom and that was it I went back to whatever I was doing half an hour later, I heard someone else coming up the stairs, and when I looked, it was my dad, fully clothed, wearing his jacket he asked me how my night went, and I just went pale. To this day, we cannot figure out what happened he checked the house, and no one was there, but, our house has been known for being haunted, if you believe in that, we've had several people leave our house, because it just didn't feel right, and some out of ordinary things have happened, that could only be explained with far fetched reasoning I never stayed in my house by myself after that. My friend and I were downtown one day, and decided to eat lunch at a sheety food court in some old mall. Most of the places were closed down, except a subway and an on-chain pizza place. We each ordered a slice of pepperoni and a fountain drink from the man behind the counter. The first thing that was weird was that he wasn't wearing a uniform, just plain clothes. The second thing that was off was that he charged us both two completely different prices, despite the fact that we each ordered the same thing. What we each paid was less than the listed price for our items on the menu. My friend and I laugh about it, eat our food, and go on with our day. Half an hour later, and we both sit down in a hotel lobby and each end up falling asleep at roughly the same time, and waking up a good hour later. We are both freaked out that we would each fall asleep for no reason and both noticed that we felt pretty sheety. A few hours later we decided to get dinner at the subway at the food court. As we enter we notice that there are two new, freaked out looking people working at pizza place. They both are wearing uniforms. At the other exit of the food court, on the opposite side, we see paramedics taking a gurney to an ambulance. Strapped to the gurney is a man that served us our pizza. A janitor was mopping up some kind of mess in front of the pizza place. We both have no clue what had happened and were too weirded out to even want to know slash ask the people at the pizza place what the hell had happened. I'm sure I posted this before. But well again, when I was 16, I went to a flea market in SC. It was the last day the flea market was open, before closing down for the season. I came across a man in a booth selling knives, throwing stars, all sorts of bladed instruments. Behind him, on a rack was a katana like this. He sold it to me, a 16 year old, for $20. Now, what is a 16 year old going to do with a katana? Nothing. I kept it for years. It stayed either in a closet or under my bed for years. I went to college. It followed. Again, never being closer to the front of my mind than when moving and thinking oh there's my sword. I forgot it was there. Fast forward to August 18th 2006. I'm now living by myself in Charleston on the ground floor of a one bedroom apartment. My katana is under my bed. I have a sliding glass door with vertical blinds, a screened in patio, and a hammock hung outside. That night, around 3am, I wake up to hear my blinds rattling. I think to myself wow it's windy outside. But I quickly remember that I never sleep with the sliding glass door open and that someone is in my apartment. I'm laying in bed, thinking of things that I can use as a weapon to defend myself and my home with. I have nothing. No gun, no bat, no golf club. I have a large mag light in the closet, but that meant I'd have to get up to get it. Then I realized something else. Under my bed was. Oh yes. It was righteous. With my sword gleaming in the dim light, I crept around the corner and looked into my living room to find two very large men stuffing my belongings into garbage bags. I can make them out, barely with no contacts in, by the light from my laptop waving around as they move around with it. When you're amped up on adrenaline, you say some dumb things. I yell, you. Stop. They both turn and run out the sliding glass door. When you're amped on adrenaline, you also do some dumb things. The only thought that going through my mind wasn't call the police or lock the door. It was those motherfuckers have my stuff. And I want it back. I chased them out of the door, through the wooded area behind my apartment, across Ashley River Road, through the Oaks apartment complex across the street, and into a marshy area behind that. All of this was in my underwear, no shoes, no contacts, and with a bigger sword. Sadly, I lost track of them, and sanity seeped back into my brain. 
I realize that they might have a gun. I know they have a knife, used to cut the screen away on my porch. I'm practically naked, blind, carrying a very large blade, and the only people that know that I'm out here are me and them. I go back inside and call the police. The burglars had cut away my screen on the patio and using the blade as a prying instrument, forced the lock on my sliding glass door open. How they managed to get past the hammock in the dark without getting wrapped up like a spider's prey is beyond me. For weeks I made rounds to area pawn shops, but to no avail. None of my stuff was ever recovered, and I was uninsured. I lost my laptop, my DVDs, all of my video games, and my keys, which was the biggest beach of the story. Strangely they didn't get my PS2, which I think is a direct result of my intervention. Strangely enough, a few years ago, there was a story I read about a kid who killed a burglar and seriously injured another with a sword. Nearly the same story. It really makes me wonder what I would have done had they not run. It wasn't really scary at the time. What is scary now is waking up to a bump in the night and not remembering if I locked the front door. TLDR. Home burgled while I was present. Chase burglars off with a sword. Edit. Adding additional details. I've posted before this before, but I'll do it again because it is absolutely creepy. I live in an apartment with my mom. One day I came home later than she did, I'm in college, so I did what I usually do, close the door, throw my stuff on the floor, and get something to eat. I didn't even think about locking the door. The night goes on and both my mom and I go to bed. I must have dozed off around midnight or a bit earlier, and it is worth mentioning that I fell into a pretty deep sleep. A little background worth mentioning, there are times when my mom leaves something of hers in my room and she has to try and get it in the morning before she leaves while I'm still asleep. She usually does so very quietly, but I can always kinda feel that she is there. Back to the story. So I'm having a good sleep when all of a sudden I feel light shuffling around my bed. This didn't really wake me up, but I guess it woke up my unconscious because I told myself that it was most likely my mom. I keep hearing this sound when all of a sudden there is a loud bang next to my bed. I happened to be laying face down, so I peek my head up and look down expecting to see my mom on the floor because she tripped over the clutter around my room. Expecting to get yelled at in Spanish, since my family is Hispanic I prepare myself for the deep sheet I'm about to be in. When all of a sudden I start hearing Chinese slash Japanese slash Korean. I had no idea what the fuck was going on, so this really woke me up. As I woke up I realized a couple of things immediately it was too early for this to be my mom. My door was wide open which my mom never does, and there was a little shadowy figure on the floor. When I heard this language I panicked and jumped off my bed and just started screaming at the top of my lungs. The shadowy figure started getting up in the creepiest way possible, like the girl from the ring. At this point the figure was in between me and my door slash light switch. Out of fear, I started yelling to turn on the light. I had no idea what I was doing, but the figure for some reason listened and slowly walked to my light switch. I swear, this part is straight out of a movie. The dark figure turns on the light for a second looks at me in the eyes and turns it back off. I see that it was an old Korean lady. She turned of the lights and started to reach for her dentures which had fallen when she tripped over my mess. At this point I was sure I was dead, my heart was pounding, and I was screaming at the top of my lungs at 4am. As she puts her dentures back in, I managed to drive her out into the hallway with my screaming. My mom came out of her room asking what the hell I was doing, she assumed I was drunk, or that a friend of mine was. She couldn't see the lady, so I stepped aside to let her see, and my mom's jaw dropped. We eventually got the lady outside, turned out she was some lady with Alzheimer's disease who got locked out of her house, and found our door to be open. I almost threw up later in the night, because I kept thinking that at some point she was watching me sleep. That was the creepiest thing I've ever heard happen. I had just turned 21, and I was living in a sketchy apartment. My boyfriend dropped me off, and there was a goddamn junkie just sitting on the couch. Junkie explains that he's there with our other roommate's permission, and of course the roommate wasn't home at the time to check the story. My boyfriend was somewhat of a jerk, and was always going on about how I couldn't treat him like my best friend, so I didn't call him to rescue me. 
Junkie asks for a tour of the house and seems super interested in the laundry room, which only has one door. I foolishly went in ahead of him and he followed me. I thought, well, I'm gonna get raped. For being stupid. Instead, he peered at the washer and asked me a bunch of detailed questions about how to operate it. I quickly retreated to my bedroom, which mercifully had a lock on the door. My pint of maker's mark was safe and sound behind my books. No one in that flop house was interested in reading, so I sat up all night sipping bourbon and listening to the junkie do his laundry. I figured it was just the weirdest scam in history, but no, junkie was an invited guest. Fuck that place. The next day, I related all this to my boyfriend, and he was horrified that I didn't call him, by the way. I was in bed one night, drifting off in the darkness of my bedroom. I couldn't quite get to sleep though. The weather was warm and my room was getting a little stuffy, so I went to open my window up and let some air in. I went back to bed, staring at the ceiling, hoping I would fall asleep out of sheer boredom. That was when I heard the sound downstairs. Now I wasn't yet asleep, and thinking that it could be a burglar or something my heart started thumping. You know the feeling. When fight or flight kicks in. When I was younger I went on work experience at my granddad's sheet metal work factory. One of my best memories of us bonding was when we both made an axe at the workshop, which he let me take home. So I reached for this axe, this little hand axe I had made years ago, and creeped out of my room in the nude. There's that sound again, this time closer. It was dark, and I didn't want to alert the burglar, so I stood at the top of the stairs, in the nude, in the dark, and with this little hand axe raised shoulder height. I had no idea what I was going to do with it. Could I really have killed or maimed someone with it? I don't know. Anyway, I hear these quiet footsteps moving up the stairs. Whoever it was really didn't want to be heard. Whoever it is, whatever it is, it is only a few steps away from me now. I'm aware of it, but it's not aware of me. 3. Closer. 2. Closer still. 1. I switched on the light, and with my hand axe held high, screaming at the top of my lungs I met with another naked man, the fear of God seared on his face, also screaming, my mother's friend, whom she had been seeing without me knowing for months, after she broke up with my father. I'm amazed how he didn't fall backwards down the stairs. Looking back at this though make me laugh. Two naked men screaming at the top of a staircase, one with a faking hand axe, both of us almost cheating ourselves with fear. TLDR, I nearly killed someone at the top of my stairs with my self-made hand axe, in the nude. Creepy at the time, but hilarious in hindsight. Okay, well this one was kind of my fault. Not using a throwaway, I'm kind of ashamed. As a 12 year old I discovered master, Bation. I had done it almost ritually every day for years two years. Until, one day. I always did it on the second floor, with my computer. My house faces another house. Edit, I meant the houses were parallel, apart only 20 or so feet, and their window was slightly lower than mine, but my window and the neighbor's window were parallel, on the second floor, and in my childish thinking, I didn't think people would look into my room midday. I was quite wrong. Here's a visual of what it was like, imga.com slash joy.png the neighbors, the adults, who lived in that house were, never home. It was always just their kids and a babysitter. Well, one day the little girl who lives there came to my house, while I was at school, to play with my little puppy who she saw outside the other day. The little girl asked where is your son, and my mom, confused as how this little girl knew who I was, replied you mean choir nerd? The little girl said yay. I like to watch him in his room, he does weird things. Upon further questioning my mother discovered she's been watching me for about 2 years, she was maybe 10 at the time. My neighbors wouldn't look at me anymore, luckily they moved shortly thereafter. So what's the most awkward thing that's ever happened to me? I had a 10 year old girl peeper as I jerked it every day, for 2 years. Edited for clarity. This didn't necessarily happen to me, but it was creepy nonetheless. I had just gotten off work and was home playing video games with my roommate when I get a call from my then girlfriend. She waited tables back then and worked late hours. Had to deal with a lot of creepy as holes. 
Anyway, she had been on the way to my apartment when she realized that she was being followed by the same car that had been parked outside the restaurant the past two nights she'd gotten off. The occupant just sat in the car smoking, watching the waitresses get in their cars and go home. Creepy motherfucker. The first thing I ask her is if she's sure he's following her, which she is. She took a rather erratic route and he stuck close behind her. The next thing I ask her is why the fact she called me instead of calling the cops first, since they could provide much more immediate assistance than I could. I tell her to call the cops and head toward my house. If the cops hadn't pulled him over by the time she got to my place, me and my roommate would be waiting for him with decorative catterness. We hang up, she calls the cops, then calls back, until they pull him over behind her. They search his car and find rope, knives, and drugs in the back seat. He gets arrested for intent to rape. I get a blowjob for my intended heroism. My journey down to Kaolanta resulted in bad experience number one. I went to a very remote coastal village called Hard Thane alone. The only way there was by a small, rickety and life-threatening boat weaving its way through rocks and choppy water. On my way over on the boat I met the only other passenger, a Spaniard. I practiced my Spanish and built rapport. I was invited to the Spaniard's island community point I arrived to the only coastal village, a sanctuary called Lady Lips. Here various strange people were stoned out their nuts in a way I will never hopefully experience again. It was like a mental institution. Mixed up people were here escaping reality. Dwarfs, transsexuals, and an AIDS victim to name a few. I was told it was the only place in Thailand with tolerance of open use of hash and opium consumption. In the cloud of passive smoke I began to feel odd. So I trekked to the highest point of the island to witness the beautiful view. Afterwards, I politely said goodbye and went to the shore for the boat home. No boat I was told. Why? As they didn't want to, couldn't be bothered taking one person. How do I get home? They gesticulated negatively. Fuck. The island had no ATM, phone, nothing. Electricity went off at 10 p.m. It was 5 p.m. and getting dark. The Spaniard by this time had taken an unfortunate shine to me and wanted me to sleep in the community. I went back hoping for the best only to find that the men were now dressed as women and the women I met earlier were, as I suspected, men. My nervousness showed and this started to offend. The Spaniard, a man like Nadia from Big Brother, got irritable with my obvious change in character. Being exhibitionists liking to shock I was exposed to a newly created vagina from a Sally Gunnell lookalike sitting spread eagle. The axe wound between his legs was comparable to a tired dog's mouth and hung like a wizard sleeve. Disgusting. I gagged when night fell I panicked and became insane with worry. I was white meat on transsexual street. I stole a towel and a shawl and slept rough on the beach. Around 3am I woke startled to the sound of footsteps and torches. Not taking any chances as there are guarded drug plantations in area I sprinted to a secluded bush where I collapsed with exhaustion and woke with a spider the size of a transsexual's hand on my chest. For my watch and all my money, equivalent of two days allowance, I managed to convince a fisherman to take me home at 7am the next day. I could never make this up. I have missed out a lot of detail. Jesus. TLDR equals transsexuals and spiders. Many years ago I was in Boy Scouts, and our troop was going on a camping trip to a summer camp that was closed in the winter. We'd gotten permission, and we'd planned to hike in. Myself and another scout went up there the day before, so we could set up the rifle slash shotgun range. We had just finished setting up as it was getting dark, when we noticed what looked like a set of glowing eyes down the hill from us. No big deal. Probably a coyote or something. Except that, even though they moved, they never blinked and never left the area. After several minutes we started to freak out. This is the point where I tell you that we'd watched the Blair Witch Project the week prior and were all of 15 and 16. Our rational brains were trying to come up with explanations for what we were seeing, but our reptilian hind brain was screaming so loud we couldn't think. Ended up in the back of my friend's explorer, each of us with a loaded shotgun and a loaded rifle. We laid there for about an hour scared to death. And that's when someone else went over to the building on the other side of the lake and turned off the light. The eyes immediately disappeared. Once we realized we were only looking at a reflection, we felt insanely stupid. 
We never told anyone either. Me and my friend used to go to Subway. A lot. Every weekend or half day of school we would go down and eat lunch there. We even ate dinner there a few times. Eventually the people working there started recognizing us, had our orders ready when we came, all that stuff. So one day in the middle of the summer, we see this old guy, minding his own business, sitting at a booth eating his sandwich. My friend and I get our sandwiches, and we take the booth in front of him. So the way this was set up was that I was facing the old guy, but my friend was in between us, facing away from him and facing me. So when we sit down at the table, I see the old guy look up, and he just starts staring at my friend. My friend obviously doesn't notice, so I try to inconspicuously say hey that dude behind you is kinda staring at you. My friend turns around, and the guy looks back down to his sandwich, pretending nothing happens. My friend turns back around, making a kind of creeped out face, but we quickly dismiss it. The old dude leaves later. A couple of days later, we come back, and the old guy isn't there. We eat our sandwiches, and later on I look to my right, and right through this glass wall type thing, is the old guy just standing there, staring at my friend. We tell the people working there, and they call the cops, but the old guy sees them, so he gets in his car and drives away, so they put off the call. Next day, me and my friend are eating there again, we wouldn't give up that place over some creepy old guy, and the employees had specific orders to call the cops if they ever see that old guy around. So a couple of customers come in while me and my friend are eating, and the workers there are busy, so I look down to take a bite of my sandwich, and suddenly when I look up I see the old guy walking briskly over to my friend. I start to say watch out. But before I finish the first word, the old guy grabs my friend by the chest and his back and tries to drag him out of the booth, saying some incomprehensible jabber. I was faking scared as sheet, and my friend was too, so acting out of pure adrenaline I throw my hot meatball marinara, maybe something else, it had hot marinara sauce though, at his face and the sauce hits his eyes and blinds him. He was blinded and started screaming, everyone else by this point was frozen in shock. So I get up and punch him right in the jaw, and he falls unconscious. I never thought I would be able to throw a punch that hard, but adrenaline is faking crazy. The old guy was eventually arrested, and we got free sandwiches there, until they decided to relocate three stores down for a bigger store area, and went under new management. It was a good run, while it lasted though we are both guys by the way. TLDR old guy stalks me, and my friend at Subway tries to grab my friend, I knock him out, and we get free sandwiches. I used to rent this basement ish apartment, where the bottom of the windows was at the same level as the ground. So it was only half underground. Big, normal sized windows. Two creepy things happened to me there which may or may not be related. Edited out the first one, it was pretty tame. Just for some context, I was 20 at the time and new to a big city, close to a million people. The only family I had in the city was my sister, but she lived at the exact opposite end, really far away. The only friends I had in the city were people from the church I was in at the time, and they didn't take it seriously. No one to stay over and help me, or to let me stay at their place. I don't know when it started, but I ended up with a stalker. I only found out I was being watched when he left me a note in my window. I grabbed my phone and pretended to be talking on it as I went outside to get it. Went back in, read it. I don't remember the exact wording, but it was along the lines of I've been watching you get dressed in the mornings, you're really pretty and have nothing to be ashamed about, I'd really like to meet you for coffee or something. I freaked out. I phoned the police and reported it, they didn't send anyone by that time, though. I was going to uni at the time, and I used to get up at 6am to get ready, when it was still dark. In my bedroom, I had a wide window that required two Venetian blinds and there was about a 1 inch gap between them. This guy would sneak up to my window and watch me through the 1 inch gap. Anyways, so one morning it had snowed, and it was crunchy. As I'm standing there getting dressed, I hear slow footsteps in the snow right outside my window. I froze, then unfroze, grabbed my towel, and wrapped it around myself, and flicked off the light. Right away he knew I knew he was there, because I heard him run away. I freaked the fuck out, and phoned the police, they sent a couple officers over. 
This was a week or so after the first incident. I missed class that morning as I waited for the police to come, take my statement and check things out. They couldn't do much, though, because I didn't know who the guy was or what he looked like. I was so faking terrified. I turned pretty close to batshit insane, not knowing who this guy was or if I knew him and saw him every day. A while after this, I was in a mall at the other end of the city with some friends and this random guy working in a store said that he saw me on the train every day. I said, that's pretty creepy and took off. I used to give vicious glares and dirty looks to random guys who would look at me for too long. I pushed a guy on a train once because I thought he was trying to put his arm around me. I now have severe personal space boundaries and hate being touched by people I'm not 100% comfortable with. I developed a manner or bearing to my outward appearance that basically said, get the fuck away from me or I will rip your head off and cheat down your neck just so that I could convince myself to go outside every day. I ended up moving a few months later, never found out who the guy was, refused to enter that part of the city for a few years, all that. This was about 9 years ago now, so I sort of think I'm okay, but it really caused some problems for me for a long time, reacting to men I didn't know, including doctors and other professionals. TLDR had a stalker leave me notes telling me he was watching me, edit, to make it shorter and add TLDR. I had a friend in college who was dating this crazy girl. One night I got an im from a mutual friend informing me that the crazy girl was talking about me in a chat room. Eventually I get screenshots of an hours long rampage where she talked about showing up at our school and stabbing me, asking others help her out. She'd constructed this elaborate fantasy about how her boyfriend and I were having some secret steamy affair, filled with detail about imaginary trysts and my devious cover up. I had an F-locked LJ that had been private since high school, and apparently she'd been desperately trying to access it. She'd also been stalking me on Facebook. Eventually I found out that this girl would have these freakouts every so often, claiming that her guy was cheating on her, or that her parents had abused her, etc etc. But the amount of time and energy she'd dedicated to demonizing someone she'd been in the same room with maybe twice was alarming. I'm not the easiest person to get along with, but I'd never imagined encountering such glaring hatred from someone I hardly knew and had never wronged in any way. I got a panicked FB message from her begging me not to call the cops or anything, and that was the last I heard from her. I stopped hanging out with the guy, as no friendship is worth that level of crazy. Years later I was still hearing stories of this girl's creepy sheet from mutual acquaintances. Apparently she had some kind of fit in a restaurant when someone brought the old group up. It was pretty damn disturbing. I work at a hotel, and in the dining area it's nothing but windows. It was a slow night, so I was sitting and watching TV, and I kept looking at the window at this old 89 hatchback Mustang, and I thought someone parked to run in right quick to see a guest, or was a guest. I continued to veg out, but I kept getting this weird feeling some douche was in the car jerking off watching me. So I went behind desk and car did not pull off until a few minutes before my relief arrived. Had my nightly smoke with my co-worker then headed out to get gas before I went home. Well surprise surprise not even enough time to pull up to the pump Mustang man showed up. He circled around the pump lane then parked by phones. I finished pumping my gas while continuously hitching at pump for being so slow. Jump in the car and pull out, and I kept an eye on him to see if he slash she would follow. I drive down the service road and sigh with relief because my imagination was really acting up when I notice the headlights off point a Mustang are slowly catching up. I loved Mustangs up until this point and her ex of mine drove same year, so I knew the headlights. At this point I call my co-worker point back and tell her I'm headed back someone is following me. I pull up to work and run inside and she makes sure doors are locked point and she has her point baseball bat. She is ready. Creepy car pulls in parking lot and naturally parks. Call 9 double one, and they send out two patrol cars. When they pull in the car tries get out but they block him in. One of them is questioning him while the other cop comes point in to ask question when his radio goes off, and he quickly heads back out. Ten minutes or so later one of the cops point comes point back in all sweaty and roughed up looking. He says the stalk did not want to corporate, so it got rough. 
So crazy guy is arrested, and he had a warrant out for him, I think it was attempted point robbery or assault or both. Bossman has car towed and a week later creepy man comes back to hotel for car and first comes point up to window, sees me and smiles, then he waves. A creepy scary red rum smile and wave. I then inform him his sheet was towed, and have a point nice day. The day after a big night drinking with friends, I decide on Hungry Jack's, Burger King, for lunch. Unfortunately the burrito from the previous night reminded me I needed to use the bathroom, so instead of ordering I head to the men's. I hear some noise, and upon entering, see a tall skinny teen with glasses fumbling with the soap dispenser. It's not working, I didn't break it, he says to me. I'll let him know it's fine, and that I don't care. So he's there just standing confused and asks me, so what should I do now? I don't know, rinse your hands in the basin, whatever I tell him. At this point I'm sure that I'm going to start at any second and the cubicle is still occupied. Have you seen Super 8 yet? The teenager asks me, standing between myself and the cubicle door. After some more confusion I realize he's asking me about a movie I hadn't yet seen. He must have thought I was waiting for the urinal because he said I was free to go ahead. At this point I just want him to leave, but he just stands there looking at me. I'm Fergus, nice to meet you, he says whilst extending his arm for a handshake. No no no. I had to apologize for not wanting to shake the hands he made a point of not being able to wash with soap. He leaves after this. This is more of the most awkward thing that's happened to me, rather than the creepiest though. While going to college, I used to work at a drive through espresso stand in an industrial area near Tacoma. I was your usual bubbly blonde barista who excelled in small talk and boosting egos. It helped the tip jar of course. So one day, I get a much older looking gentleman, not a day younger than 60, who stops by and orders a can of Diet Coke which goes for $1. He gives me $1 and put $5 in my tip jar. Not the first time so no big deal, but I'll definitely remember him next time. He continues to come by 2 to 3 times per week, always when I'm in the stand. Customers would watch for our cars if they preferred a barista. He still gets the $1 coke and tips me $5. Nice man. Always easy to talk to. Never came on to me. Eventually he bumped it up to a $20 tip and I started getting nervous. I always want to think the best of people and I definitely treated him like I wasn't bothered but something was definitely awry. Valentine's Day comes up and I'm working. My $1 coke man drives up and I go to the back to grab his drink. When I come up to the window, there laying for me was a box of chocolates, two dozen roses, and one hundred dollars. I was freaked out. I didn't even know how to react, I thanked him for the chocolates and the flowers refused the money, but he stuck it into my tip jar before driving off. At this time, school was overwhelming anyways, so I came to the decision that things just weren't safe for me there, and my 30 hours per week schedule was too overwhelming. I loved the job so much and was sad to leave, but I gave my two weeks notice. For the following weeks the $1 coke man continued to come by, get his $1 coke and tip me $100. I kept asking my boss for advice on how to handle the situation, but she'd laugh it off and tell me just to take the money. I probably would have handled the situation better, but I was too shy to say no. On my very last day, mind you, I never told anyone I was leaving for my own safety, the $1 coke man came by, ordered his coke, tipped me $100, and before he left he asked me what I was doing that weekend, and if I'd like to geo out with him. Let me cite my earlier comment on being shy, and not being able to say no, I did in fact avoid saying no in this situation too. I said I had to wait for the schedule to come out from work and work around my school schedule, and I'd let him know next time. At the end of the day, I blacked out every bit of information about me, wrote notes to everyone who would come after me to never give out any of my information, locked up and left. I believe I made about $1000 off that man. It was such an awful situation that haunts me to this day. Throw away, because I still have serious guilt for how this whole thing played out. Two of my female friends and I were walking home from the beach one night, I'm a girl too. We are 15 and stupid, and feeling pretty invincible. We decide to take a shortcut along this gravel path, 
that cuts through a wooded area near our houses may be about 500 feet of isolated, unlit road only wide enough for the three of us to walk side by side. About halfway along the path, the friend on my right screams and falls over, knocking over my other friend as she goes down. I'm freaked so I just start running, but after going about 20 paces I realize that my friends aren't following, so I stop and turn around. All I see is this silhouette bent over my two friends, who are still tangled up on the ground. I call out to them, something like you guys okay. The silhouette looks up, turns, and runs off into the bushes. At this point, my friends are up off the ground, and we run home as fast as possible. We debated for a couple of hours whether we should call the cops or not, but we were dumb and young, and we somehow managed to convince ourselves that he meant us no harm, probably because the alternative was just too frightening to consider. A couple of years later a 12-year-old girl was raped on that path. I still feel guilt for not telling someone. It's a very small town, at the very least, putting the word out that the path was unsafe and too dark at night might have convinced someone to install some lighting. Something. TLDR. Guy lingers in the bushes, tries to grab my friend. Yikes. 10th grade Spanish class. This girl, we'll call her Sam, since that's her name, and I harbor an unreasonable paranoia that someone will read this and say I know who he's talking about sat in front of me. I had kinda known her since 5th grade, but we were never really friends. She was just someone I knew from school. Now, she was quite an unfortunate looking individual. Fat, pasty white, full out emo rocker monster thing. Smelled funny too. Anyways, all the time in class, she'd keep turning around and annoying me. She'd keep talking to me, kinda get in the way of my work, and she did this thing, where she'd lean her head back on my desk, her hair would get all over my papers, giving me a full view of hell's cleavage. I was a nice, quiet kid back then, so I didn't really know what to do. I just stayed polite, and tried to get on with things. Then, one faking day, after class, she was hitting on me after class, but she was holding her arms weird. Like, you know how your default posture has your wrist facing your torso? She had her wrists turned out towards me. That's when I noticed, the scars on her blubbery forearms spelled out love. Not a good way to express your feelings. TLDR. Girl that had a crush on me carved love into her arm. Who op? Just thought of another good one. A couple of years ago, I was at my house with my girlfriend. I had to go to class that day, so I left her alone at my house to do some homework, and I'd be back in a couple of hours. My truck was low on gas, so I borrowed my mom's car, she carpooled with dad. I always cut my phone off during class, so when I get out I have a voice email from my best friend. Dude, if you didn't wanna hang out and just wanted to fack, girlfriend's name, all you had to do was say so. It's messed up that you just avoided me. Obviously, I had no idea what the sheet he was talking about. I called my girlfriend. Yeah, best friend's name. Stopped by and asked if you were here, but I told him you went to class in your mom's car. Huh. After being ignored several times by my angry BFF, he finally picked up and told me what happened. He was driving down my street, which was a dead end, and saw me standing in my driveway staring at my girlfriend's car. He said it was unmistakable. Brown hair, broad-shouldered black sweater, glasses. When he saw me, he stuck his head out his window and yelled at me waving excitedly like a dumbass. My doppelganger looked up and ran around the side of the house. My friend followed and entered through the side door, expecting me to be inside. He asked my girlfriend where I was, and he looked all through the house. I explained that I really did go to class that day. My first thought was that my girlfriend was cheating on me at my faking house. But she said she just heard some weird noises outside. Then, best friend, came in. So she just attributed those sounds to him. Two weeks later, my dad found a bag of cocaine next to the bushes near that side of our house. A big picket fence separates us from the neighbors on the street perpendicular to us, and they are sketch as fuck. Who knows the whole story? TLDR. My angry best friend potentially and inadvertently saved my girlfriend's life from my drug dealing doppelganger. I'm a little late to this party, but here's mine. I'm always being approached by strangers. 
It's almost uncanny how often it happens. Usually it's just friendly chit chat and me going home with someone's life story, but sometimes it gets really weird. There was this one guy who approached me when I was inside a bus shelter. He was a really thin guy with blonde hair and braces. He walks into the bus shelter and sort of stares at me for a minute. That's when I knew that he was going to be a creeper. Then he says, so, how are you on this fine evening? I said I was fine. He said it was good that I was fine. Then he says, I'm really ticklish. I tried to ignore him and stare off in the direction the bus would come from. A minute later, he said, I'm so very very ticklish. All I could think so say was, so is a friend of mine. I made sure I said it in a quipped way that should signal I was done with the topic. But that didn't work. The creepy guy asked me if I was ticklish. I said no. A lie, but I didn't want him coming anywhere near me. So, he responds with, that's too bad. But, I like being tickled more than I like tickling. I struggled for something to say and came up with, I don't really like tickling in general. He asked me what I meant and I said that I didn't like to be tickled and that I didn't like tickling people. He said that was too bad. Too bad for him. I said that my ticklish friend was fine with it. He had a longish hoodie on. But at one point he crossed his arms and the hoodie rose up, which is when I noticed that he had a huge boner. At that point I went from uncomfortable to nervous. There was no one else at the bus stop, but it was a semi-busy area, and I knew if I screamed, someone would notice. Plus, I had a hot beverage, which was almost full. So, I resolved that, if he moved so much as a foot closer to me, it was going in his face. Then I would scream bloody murder. He asked me where I was going. I said a birthday party. When he asked who's, I said my boyfriend's, true. He fell silent, and just faking stared at me. Then my bus came, and he took off running across the road. TLDR, approached in a bus shelter by a guy with a boner and a tickling fetish. Sick third person story here, but I think it's better this way. When I was about 11, my mother and I were sitting on the porch of her place chatting away about family and things, and she got to telling me some stories about her childhood with her sisters. You should know that my mother's the black sheep of the family, she's disliked and basically ignored by her four sisters, all of whom are older, due to some poor decisions she has made, and her almost impeccable ability to be selfish, etc. Anyways, somehow we got talking about little family idiosyncrasies, and we got to talking about her older sister, we'll call her Rosa, and some terrible and profuse nosebleeds that she would get. One story was when my mother was about 4, which would make Rosa about 9, and their mom and dad got dressed up and went out for the afternoon. At some point in my grandparents' absence, Rosa got one of her bad nosebleeds to a whole new degree of terrible this time. My mom recalled the scene being a bloodbath, with five young girls sheeting themselves at the site, especially since the eldest sister, we'll call her Mariah, was only 11 at the time. The sisters did what they could with towels and things and were just about to call 9 double one when a family friend and co-worker of my grandfather's, Danny, walked in, he lived nearby, and showed up all the time unannounced. The girls obviously began deferring to his judgement, he told them exactly what to do, this part was hazy to my mom and she never told me exactly what he told them to do. Eventually it stopped, and Annie left as abruptly as he arrived. The sisters gave Rosa some food and let her rest until their parents got home. Come about three hours later, my grandparents get home and Mariah, the eldest, tell them all about the really bad nosebleed and the towels and the hysterical screeching that were their cries. The parents seemed calm until Mariah mentioned Danny came over and gave them first aid advice. My grandmother told Mariah that that couldn't have happened and told her to tell her who actually came over and helped them. Mariah assured them it was Danny. My grandparents then started to get angry and repeatedly denied that it was even possible Danny helped them, all the while shouting at Mariah for lying. Mariah asked why they were so sure. They said because Danny was dead. He died two days prior in an accident at the steel mill where he and my grandfather worked, and they just got back from his funeral. My mom said that everyone started crying when they all realized no one was lying. My mom told that story to me and seemed to be sincere, but I still had a lot of trouble believing it.
since she does have a history of making sheet up and embellishing, so I figured her sisters would be happy to dispel the tailor's hogwash given their rocky relationship over time with her. Cut to a month later. I'm at my aunt Mariah's house visiting and her, and I were sitting watching TV. Now, my aunt is a very straightforward and honest steely person, who distrusts most things, about everything. She's a bit of a realist, if you will. So we get on the subject of my mom and I begin recounting this apparent lie that my mother told me in an abbreviated and rather coy fashion. I'm staring at the TV almost the entire time I'm telling this, and when I finish I get silence, and the TV turns off. I turn and my aunt Mariah is staring me dead in the face with tears pouring down her eyes, and says the following, and I'll never forget it. Your mother shouldn't have told you that. That incident took a toll on this family. It didn't leave the room then. It doesn't leave the room now, and got up and walked away. I sat there in silence for quite some time. I've never mentioned it since. TLDR dead family friend helped my dying child aunt all, while being dead edit, grandma. I was in a bookstore killing time reading a book, when I just happened to glance up, and see a guy standing in a nearby aisle facing me, presumably reading a book of his own. I didn't pay much attention. Maybe 15 minutes later I looked up again, and he was still there. I also noticed he was watching me, and his book was lower than where it would have been if he was actually reading it. I ignored him and continued reading. I thought maybe it was just a coincidence, and we had both looked up from our books at the same time. After a little, while he walked around the bookshelves to stand on the opposite side of where he had been, he turned around, still holding that same book, and resumed watching me. He stayed there for a few minutes then went back to his original position. His book was still lowered, and he was definitely staring at me, but I didn't make eye contact. The tipping point, so to speak, on the uncomfortable meter was when I noticed that the hand not holding the book was in his front pocket. And he kept adjusting that hand, moving it around a little in his pocket. I tried not to look at him, and by now I was thinking, no, he's not, is he? This is not normal. I'm out. I glanced at him as I stood up, and I made eye contact for the first time. He gave me this big toothy smile and a slow nod. Which in my mind translates to, yup, I'm gonna murder you in the parking lot. I made a circuitous trip around the store, making sure he wasn't following me, then waited until a group of a few people left the store then followed them out. TLDR, in a bookstore where a guy pretends to read, while staring at me for what must have been an hour. I finally realized his hand was spending a little too much time in his front pocket, and got the hell out. I was walking home alone around 2am in West Philly, foolish as an innocent looking female. The street was completely deserted except for one man walking the other direction across the street. He crosses the street and walks right over to me. He mumbles something about where he could go to, something, somewhere. I couldn't make it out, and I didn't really care what he had to say. I just uncomfortably mumbled to him to find an alley. I crossed the street. Crisis averted, I thought. Nope, he crosses the street to me a minute later and pulls out a born magazine. I start to quicken my pace as he says all you gotta do is stand there in them jeans and I ain't trying to go to jail. He pulls a wad of cash out of his pocket. I got money. I'm in a light sprint at this point and just trying to ignore him. There was no one to hear me yell or scream, and did not want to show him how frightened I was. He eventually stormed off in front of me and disappears, pissed I had denied him from getting his rocks off for the night. A few minutes later, I turned the corner onto my street. Suddenly he jumps out from behind a building and starts bolting down the street toward me. I ran into the 711. Fortunately, he didn't follow. It's kind of a funny story to me now, but at the time, it was absolutely terrifying. When I was younger, like stupidly young to be online. 11 to 13 or so, I spent a lot of time talking to random people I met on gaming websites. Most of the time, they were really awesome people, and we had decent, intriguing conversations. I'm still good friends with a few of them today. Well, there was this one guy called Gumba who was really witty and always had really interesting stuff to say, so I kept talking to him, even when he started getting a bit obnoxious. He kept showing me how awesome he was at hacking he'd do dumb things on forums like make a thousand copies of one post or something. 
Then he found out that I was a girl and he decided that he was going to do all that he could to impress me. He told me that he was immensely powerful and started getting more into hacking and scams and stuff. He'd find information about me on my school's website that was supposed to be only accessible to teachers and stuff. I broke off contact with him for about a year. One day my messenger screwed up and unblocked him or edited him or something and he contacted me and I decided to be polite. We had a normal conversation until I mentioned that I'd like to have a car eventually. He said, don't worry about that. I can get you a car. I was like, lol, okay, when will that be? He said, when I start my coup. You can have any car you'd like when I get my first government. I ignored it, like you ignore any bad joke. Then a few years later a mutual friend sent me a new story. I had forgotten all about the guy. He bought a wig, sunglasses, and a sharp hunting knife, and stabbed a nurse 70 to times. He didn't stop stabbing her until his wig fell off. When they asked why he randomly killed this woman, he said he was going to steal her car so that he could travel to Africa to start a coup. I was so creeped out. I had been chatting with a murderer for years. And I felt connected to the crime. I felt guilty for a while. It was terrible. TLDR. I befriended Britain's most dangerous teen when I was a child. He was creepy. There is a man who goes to my church, he's older maybe 50 over 60 years old, around there. Anyway, he is always checking out the younger girls at church, girls ranging from 12, 24 or so, he lives about a block from me too. He always paid extra attention to me, and I didn't ever want to be rude, because he was an elder and all, but I didn't want to be anywhere near him. I'd always find excuses to get away from him, but he would follow me. I was always glad to get out of church, because then he couldn't follow me, except for when he did. I was home alone one day, when I was 16 or 17. I needed to get a school book out of my car, so I grabbed my keys and headed out, even though I was in my pajamas, some boxes and a tank top. He was standing next to my car. He asked me how I was doing. I'm okay, and you? He asked me what was going on with my life, just, school boring stuff. And he asked me if I was home alone and if I would like some company. Actually, I have to go to the store. And I got straight in the car, shoeless and in boxes, and drove off and left him in my driveway. I later caught him taking pictures of me and a couple other girls at church. We've gone to our bishop to ask him to help with dealing with this guy. But the bishop is at a loss of what to do. A few years ago, when I was 18 I was living in Perth. Australia and I used to frequent this bar in the city. I was working different hours to my friends at the time, so I used to head over for a few beers to chill out and would usually end up talking to random strangers. I'm a very sociable person. Anyways, one night in particular I was in this bar and got talking to this group of lads. Getting on great with them, having a good laugh and the bar we are in is closing. So they mention they're heading to another bar that had cheap beer and was open all night. They asked if I fancied heading along, and me being drunk, and considering them to be a sound person decided to head with them. So they drive over to the bar, which is a good 30 to 40 minute drive from where I was living, and have a few drinks, and then I start to get the feeling that one or two of them aren't right. There's a few comments, and I suddenly start to feel a bit uneasy realizing that I'm out in the middle of nowhere, miles away from where I'm staying, and with no real clue as to how to get back. So I asked the barman if there is a taxi company nearby, or if he had a phone number, or whatever for one. He said no, and that I might be lucky and catch one on the road outside. So I make my excuses and leave the bar, and try to find a cab on the street. About 5 minutes pass, and no sign of one. So I start to walk in the direction I think home is in when all of a sudden a car pulls up beside me, with the guys who I was drinking with in it. They tell me they'll give me a lift back across the city if I want, so stupidly I decide to get back into the car with them. We are driving for a bit, and one of the guys keeps contradicting everything I say, basically trying his best to provoke me and start an argument when I notice we are driving in the wrong direction to where I was staying. I mention it to the guy driving, and he ignores me, I tap him on the shoulder, and say it again, and then he turns to the guys in the back, and says in a very cold tone are we doing this, or what? 
To which the guy next to me responds fuck him, let's do it. With that the car starts speeding up, and the guy next to me grabs my arm. Being completely freaked out I punch the guy next to me as hard as I can in the face and swing open the car door and I have the fuck out onto the street. Next of all the car comes to a screeching halt. The four guys jump out and start running in my direction screaming get the cunt, get him. So I pick myself up and fucking haul ass, diving through people's back gardens and whatnot until I hide in a hedge. The guys were seriously searching for me for about 10 minutes and I was sheeting myself, covered in blood, from diving out of moving car, hiding in a hedge. After they left I waited another 10 minutes before coming out and had to walk all the way back to where I lived, which took a good 2 hours. Still don't know what the fuck they had planned, but I wasn't waiting around to find out. TLDR, on the verge of being kidnapped, dived out of moving car and hid in a bush. A couple years back I was walking to work, I was actually so close I could see the place in the distance, and this guy in his forties pulls alongside me and says he wants to give me a ride, he knows where I work, and he wants to do a nice thing, and isn't gonna hurt me, so I'm just wondering what the hell his deal is, and saying I'm really close anyway, but I was kind of late and this dude is just driving alongside me begging me to get in, and I don't know why, but I just get in. He drives me to work, drops me off and drives away. Few weeks later I'm stocking shelves, and this guy sneaks up behind me, and is asking me if I remember him, and then he's asking me all these personal questions like, if I have a girlfriend, or what kinds of things I like to do, and he's saying he wants to buy some flowers for me to give to my girlfriend, and he wants to get me dinner, and he's giving off weird vibes, and I'm just getting more and more creeped out, and trying to get out of there. Finally some other customer comes along and asks me a question and I help them. A little bit after this, he comes in again and tries to ask me a bunch of personal questions and then it happens again and he's asking if I want to go to the cheese or cake factory and get drinks just as friends or whatever and I guess I exhausted his interest because that was the last time I ever saw him. I'm a good looking guy. I have been hit on by women and men alike. But this didn't feel good natured at all. There was this vibe he was giving off that still scares the hell out of me. I believe if I had gone anywhere with him, I would've gotten raped or murdered. My girlfriend gets a yearbook photography assignment for taking pictures of a graveyard. No idea what her teacher was planning with this, anyways. She felt scared to go alone, so I went with her. I was walking through a graveyard with her, and we were pointing the camera at a grave that had a Freemason seal on it. It was extremely foggy and overcast. The camera flashed, and I started moving on. She says to me, um, I didn't do that. I ask her what she meant, and she goes on to say that she didn't press the button. I asked her if she was absolutely sure, and she was like yes, I'm absolutely sure. What the hell, look at this picture. I look at the camera screen and the scene was bright as day and not overcast at all. I felt a stillness for a second and then was like yep, we are going home, come on. And as I was walking out of the graveyard I swear I saw a lady dressed in white sitting between some gravestones in the distance. I did a double take, but on the second, look she wasn't there. We promptly exited the graveyard. Edit, I forgot to add, I talked to my friend the next day about it and he told me a story. He was biking along when suddenly something black went past him really quickly, not really a recognizable shape, just a black blur about the size of a person. Without warning his tires locked up, and he almost fell off his bike. He got off for a second and looked around, but there was no one to be found. He got back on his bike, and finding that it was back to normal kept on going. He was right beside the same graveyard. I now cannot pass that graveyard without searching between the gravestones, and whenever I see a woman wearing white at around twilight I have the sudden urge to run away. So I go to this anarchist reading circle right. This guy had come the last time I showed up and gave off these really creepy slash weird vibes, gives fake names every time he comes. Two people are discussing this book on feminism, forget the name, and labiaplasty gets mentioned creepy fact starts off on the variety of labia he's seen in the course of his born research. Collective what the fact moment was had by everyone. 
Anyway we got around to discussing this sign right, it was on consent and stuff, it wasn't like she could get any weirder slash uncomfortable then it already was right. I was so very totally faking wrong. Dollar sign CREPYFAK launches into this, really faking weird rape apologist spiel. I'm not exaggerating this sheet, all people are inherently innocent ergo so are rapists, and rapists are actually rapping. The dress and don't intend to hurt the victim. The television is constantly telling people to rape. Everyone is being raped by society, or something. He started gibbering about sovereign citizens at one point. Totally nonsensical. Naked person on beach and they aren't moving. Totally alright to have sex with them. At this point it was subtly suggested that he stf you. It was really faking creepy. There were only three of us aside from him, and the one girl was getting eye faked as he rambled on. Oh, and apparently he had brought in a bunch of Namblalit to share the session before I had started coming. Also he started talking about consent issues in terms of him having sex with the cartoon children on the front of the sign. I'm pretty sure he's been banned, missed the last two meetings. Never felt that way before in my life. When I was 21, I had to take to take a general physical exam for a job that I had applied for. No big deal. I go to this medical place in a fairly decent neighborhood and didn't think anything out of the ordinary was going to happen. Nurse tells me I have to put on a gown, etc. and wait for the doctor. I put on one of those ever so flattering gowns that tie in the back and I'm still wearing underwear underneath. Male doctor, probably in his 30s, comes in and does his perfunctory introduction and tells me he's just checking the basics. Everything goes fine until he tells me he's going to check my tonsils. I'm sitting on one of those exam tables and he comes in close in front of me with his little flashlight and tongue depressor and I open my mouth. Just then I feel that he puts his crotch right on top of my left knee and rests his junk on me. I was so shocked I couldn't think of anything to say and I wanted to pass the physical so I didn't say anything. He took a good look inside my mouth, but that whole time I could feel him moving his crotch on my knee. So weird and awkward. My life is littered with creepy events. I will give a very short account of several things I have gone through. When I was about 7 years old, I stayed the night at my cousin's apt. For about a month or so, he had refused to sleep in his own room, and felt comfortable sleeping on the couch, and I would have to as well. One night, trying to be the supporting older cousin, I told him he was just having bad dreams and should sleep in his room. He refused and said that he would feel the bed shake or not be able to get out of the covers. Long story short, he went to bed and I decided I might as well use the bigger comfier bed. Right before I fell asleep, I'm guessing at about 10pm, the blanket suddenly felt heavy and the shaking began. Nothing else moved, only the bed which shook for what I'm guessing is about 10 to 15 seconds and had went from being perpendicular to the wall to about a 40 degree angle. He heard it and was crying and on came in and was mad at me for being mean and scaring my cousin. When I was about 10 years old, stayed the night at another cousin's house which had about 6 acres of land as a backyard in which the back corner had two hills. In the daytime we would only be allowed to play on the first hill, assuming her mom would think we were up to no good if we went further, but one day, her mom left, and I decided to go past the first hill. Behind the second hill, sheet. I saw three or four duffel bags, and the smell was awful, flies everywhere. I wasn't bothered initially, in my 10 year old mind I thought there might be money in the bags or something. So I opened one up and saw a shoe with a pant leg overlapping, as if it were attached to a body. I freaked out and ran back. Aunt comes home about 30 minutes later and I told her what I saw. She said oh it is probably just a homeless man's belongings and said she would just throw it away. Instead of taking them to her dumpster, she called a special garbage man who showed up in a garbage truck that did not look like any other one in the area to get rid of the duffel bags. During middle school, I developed some sort of insomnia. I would fall asleep, but wake up for about 2 hours mid-sleep for about a year or so. Anyways, after realizing I couldn't just fall asleep, I would try to wear myself out, read, listen to boring music etc. One day I decided, if I went for a run around the neighborhood, that may work better. My neighborhood was all horse property homes, imagine a plus sign, 
where the lines are horse trail and the spaces are home slash property. Anyway I start on my jog, and I pass the first trail no problem. Round the corner, and on the second trail I happen to stop and decide to just think. I look down, and saw a guy who, I swear was at least 6 feet 7 inches at minimum, dressed in what I would consider goth attire facing away from me. I still feel I was fairly quiet, that he was unaware I was there. Anyways, he lifts his head, as if smelling something, like a wolf smelling prey, lifts his hands outward to shoulder height, and suddenly looks around, and makes immediate eye contact with me, and had the most sinister look on his face. I was frozen, and he stared at me for probably only 5 seconds, though it felt much longer. He then proceeded to walk quickly towards me, and I booked it. I had friends whose house was closer than mine would have been, who luckily had only horses, no dogs. So I run into his backyard, did not knock or anything out of fear this other guy would hear me and find me, so I camped out there for probably 30 minutes. I wasn't completely sure he was gone, but I wanted to be home and ran home. Took about 5 minutes full speed to get there, but I did make it, unharmed. Still have yet to figure out who it was. Same house, I would always see someone cross my lawn, toward my room window, just to the side of it where I couldn't see. After a few moments, they would walk past, very slowly, but never made noise, or tried to get in. Turned out it was a neighbor who had a thing for me, still very creepy. Okay that's all for now. TLDR haunted apt in the ghetto. Aunt may have been a serial killer. Big as vampire or something similar. Stalker. My mom lives in a nice neighborhood, and her neighbors across the street have an autistic 12 year old son. He was very tall and lanky for his age, and I would see him outside when I went to visit her, playing with his ball, or running in the front yard under the supervision of his carriage driver. One day about a year ago I came out of the house to find him staring at the bottom of my car, slowly pacing around it. He had lost his ball under there. I told him no worries and grabbed it for him. When I put it in his hands, he slowly looked up at me. His head corked to the side and his mouth hung open slightly, his eyes were vacant. I gave him an awkward smile, but he just stared back silently, his long arms cradling the bull like an infant. I turned and walked back into the house, but not without a quick look over my shoulder. The boy was still staring at me like a statue perched on the curb. Afterward I told my then girlfriend about what had happened. She said oh, he was probably wanted to say thank you, but was just confused and didn't know what to do. I decided to stay over at my mom's that night. It was autumn, and the Santa Rana winds were howling in full force. I remember hearing a trash can blow down the street at about 2am as I sat in my old room upstairs on the internet. The next sound I heard was the house alarm system. Beep beep front door open. The strong wind was known to blow the door open if you didn't make sure it was closed all the way. The hallway outside my room was dark, and I fumbled halfway through to find the light switch. I flicked it on on Sheeta Brickhouse. The autistic boy from across the street was standing at the top of my staircase, staring at me with that same dead look. His head hung loosely to one side and his mouth was open again. But what really got me was those empty soul-eating eyes. After a minute of regaining my composure I took him by the hand and walked him back across the street. His fingers were long and spidery and icy cold. His front door was open, so I showed him inside and scurried back home, making well sure the front door was locked this time. This story is long, but I promise it's good. I got a job at a newspaper straight out of college, and it was a pretty typical office setup with the usual characters, including the antisocial computer nerd. This guy just hated women. The newsroom staff would all go to, to dinner together some evenings and we'd be in a restaurant and he'd seal and sail off and on TV across the restaurant and just start saying things like, look at that filthy cunt. She's so disgusting. He just had such contempt for women, and I think it goes back to his overbearing and mentally unstable mother. That's a story for another thread. So anyway, at some point in the first few months I work there, I go to a going away party for another co-worker and I recount the following story before I moved away from my hometown to go to college about 4 years earlier. My friends threw me a party. We loved to embarrass one another, so I was sure they would have something in store for me. 
so I figured I'd go online and buy a men's zebra print thong to wear, and if they threw me into a pool or something, I could just climb out in just those and one-up them. At some point in the party, I drank too much and stripped down to the thong anyway, and someone, I honestly didn't remember who, took a photo of me in a t-shirt and the zebra thong holding a cake that said, see you in hell, my friend. So remember, I just casually mentioned that there was a photo of me. I didn't say who took it. I didn't even have a copy of it. It was just a story about the fact that this photo existed. Well as the next year and a half or so progressed, this guy kind of became a stalker. My co-workers were always joking with me that he had a crush on me and was following me around. The guy moved out of his mom's and into my apartment complex, and even though he lived on the other side of the complex and could not see my place from his, he would somehow know to call me within 10 seconds of me getting home each night to ask if he could come over and use my Wi-Fi, since he couldn't afford internet. Seriously, within seconds, even before I turned any lights on. Then one night he calls me at about 4am and says there are cops outside my door. I go to investigate and almost get shot because there are two cops standing in the darkness with guns drawn trying to open my neighbor's door because they had a warrant for something. It didn't occur to me right that second, but why was this guy monitoring my apartment at 4am? I was kind of too weird around to even ask him. Eventually we hired a girl fresh out of college as a graphic designer and she knew a lot more about it than this guy did. So with her coming onto his turf, doing the job better than he could, and being a woman, he hated her and would go pretty far out of his way to sabotage things she did. Then one night, a couple months after she started, and about a year and a half after the first and only time I mentioned that zebra thong photo to him, he walks over to my desk with his laptop and this big grin and says, look what I have. He shows me his laptop and it's that picture. I was blown away simply by the fact that he managed to find it. I asked him how he got it and he said, Jenna, our female co-worker, who was off that night, fake name, got it. She went on my space and emailed some of your friends, I guess. I wasn't upset anyone had the photo, I couldn't have cared less. I was just impressed someone hunted it down. Then I just rolled my eyes and forgot about it. The next afternoon, when we all came into work, I noticed Jenna staring at me, looking at her computer, staring at me, looking at her computer, and doing that over and over. And finally I turned to her and asked what was up. She said, hey, I, uh, I have, someone emailed me a photo of you. I stopped her, said yeah, yeah, I know, of me in a zebra thong. She asked how I could possibly know she had it, since she was just that second opening the email and seeing the photo for the first time. Just then our asshole co-worker walks by and says, oh, I hacked into your MySpace and emailed his friend. We were speechless. I was amazed at that level of weirdness, and she of course went to ours, and for the first time told them all the passive aggressive things he had been doing to her since the day she started. He got fired, and there is a copy of that photo in the incident file, which I like to think exists to this day even years after any of us worked there. I later saw the email he sent out. He pretended to be her, sent it to one person. I would have had to ask 20 people, but somehow he knew the one person who had it. Faking weird. But wait, there's more. In fact, it gets better. My neighbors would tell me he'd sit on my porch while I was working, and I assumed he was trying to steal my Wi-Fi. I changed the password. Then, about two months go by, and I've not had any contact with the guy. My hot water heater breaks, and the maintenance guys come to replace it. Apparently, as I later learned, they forgot to lock both ends of my sliding glass door when they rolled the old one out, and I didn't think to check one of the ends. I would routinely come home on my dinner break and change from khakis into jeans. I only owned two pairs of jeans then, and every day they'd be lying on my bed where I left them before I went to work that afternoon. Well I came home about a week after the hot water heater incident at about 5pm and noticed that my jeans were gone. I found the second pair, but the pair I left out and my belt were gone. Over the next couple days I tore my place apart searching for them to no avail. Everyone at work was saying that guy broke into my place and stole them. Well a few days later I realize that door was unlocked next to where he sat trying to steal my Wi-Fi, and it all made sense. 
But wait. There was still this tiny tiny shred of doubt that guy stole my jeans. It was just too weird for me to believe, and maybe I was in denial. Then my girlfriend pointed out that I could tell it was him if he stole the zebra thong too. The zebra thong had been rolled up in a bowl in the back of my underwear drawer for about 5 years at that point as I had not worn it since that party my friends threw me. Sure enough, the thong was gone. Dude stole my jeans, my belt and my zebra thong. No other explanation makes much sense, especially since the $10,000 worth of guitars and amps and all my other valuables were left in alone. But wait. About a year later this alleged pants thief is working at a big retail store, and at this point I've gotten a new job in a new state. A former co-worker calls me up and says I should look up that guy's Facebook profile, so I do. His status is something like, I've lost about 60 pounds since I started working here. My goal is to fit into a pair of size 36 pants a friend gave me. My stolen jeans were a size 36. That's not a beach. Wait LDR. Co-worker hacked into another co-worker's MySpace. Emma held my friend 200 miles away asking for an embarrassing photo of me. Showed it off around work. He got fired. He stalked me. And he ultimately broke into my apartment. To steal pants and a men's zebra thong. Creepiest thing to happen to me, there was this new girl in high school, and from the moment she saw me, she was absolutely infatuated with me. Without ever saying a word to me, she very quickly learned my schedule, and would hand me notes in between classes, whenever we passed in the hallways. They were always notes talking about how she can't stop thinking about me, how cute I am, etc, etc. I'd be lying if I said they weren't ego boosters. I never wrote back, except for once, because with every note she didn't get a reply to, she seemed a little more depressed that I didn't write her back. It's not like this girl was ugly and I was being shallow or anything. She was pretty cute, just really faking creepy. I hadn't realized it yet, but I've made a huge mistake. This girl finally gets the courage to talk to me. I might dodge a phone call or ignore a text from time to time from people. But I'm a pretty nice guy, if you try to make a pass at social interaction with me in person, I'll talk, I mean, I'm not an asshole. I've made an even huger mistake. I'm talking like, burned down the banana stand huge mistake. Talking to this girl wasn't so bad, as long as I kept steering the conversation away from certain subjects, like her and I, and kept it a very casual small talk conversation. I was a pretty well known kid in high school, everybody knew who I was, I was the kid with the liberty spike mohawk, each spike a foot long, black, and purple, and the bullet belt, I stuck out, so it was pretty easy, to get my last name, this girl figures out my name, and then gets my cell phone number, house number, address, email address, and aim screen name, my name wasn't listed in the phone book, so how did we get all this information? She starts calling me at my house, on my cell, asking me what I'm doing, if I want to hang out, etc, etc. She starts stalking me on the internet, emailing me all the time, never got any nudes out of her slash sad face, even shows up at my house a couple times. I've had enough of this, so I ask her how she got all of my information. She asked a kid at school, and he got it all for her. I wasn't even friends with this kid, not even acquaintances. What the fuck? She then confesses that she's had a huge crush on me ever since she first saw me and asked me if I'd take her as my girlfriend. I told her I wasn't interested in a relationship with anybody. She starts freaking out. The stalking gets worse and worse and now she's practically throwing herself at me at school. Trying to sit on my lap at lunch, wrapping her arms around me at lunch, wrapping her arms around me from behind while following me to my classes. I ended up stopping going to lunch. During my lunch period I hung out in the shop class to shoot the sheet with the shop teacher because he was a faking badass. This girl still isn't getting the hint that I want nothing to do with her. I finally just confront her and tell her straight up that it's not because of her looks that I don't like her. Don't you think I'm cute? A lot, but because she just creeps me the fuck out. She goes ballistic. At the time, my high school consisted of 1300 kids. Obviously all 1300 kids weren't in the vicinity when this happened, but there were a lot of faking kids. 
She starts screaming and crying and falls to her knees in a pitiful pouting, not begging, position. Everybody in the vicinity is now staring at us. She starts begging and pleading with me to make her my girlfriend and that if I didn't date her, she was going to kill herself. I couldn't believe this was happening. It was total shock and completely and utterly embarrassed for the both of us. She had me cornered. I couldn't exactly just walk away. It was really faking awkward. After this whole thing went down, her parents ended up withdrawing her from the high school and shortly after, maybe like 2-3 to three weeks later, they moved to Ohio. When I was about 14 I walked with two of my cousins downtown to the local movie rental place. I lived in a small town, about 1000 people, and it was only about 10 blocks away. It was still daylight when we headed out, and at one point we passed a house where some commotion was happening. On the first floor there was a man in a broken window, his back to us, with a woman who was holding him and moving glass. On the second floor some woman yelled down at us there ain't no fuck in show here, just because we looked over to see what the fuck happened as we were walking. So we shrugged it off, kept walking. We walked back around 40 minutes later. It was dusk, and we were walking on the other side of the road this time, by the elementary school. We passed the house again but there was nothing happening. However, as we walked by, a middle-aged Native American woman came walking out of the house and diagonally across the road toward us. I remember being really creeped out seeing her because she was dressed in a full white pantsuit and was totally silent. We said hello and kept walking, but then we saw she had a knife in her hand, so we started running. She came chasing after us, but she fell over and we were only a block away from my house, so we made it home called my parents, and went and filed a police report. There were four or five squad cars outside her place later that night. A couple years after that, she ended up stabbing her girlfriend to death with a screwdriver. True story. Apparently they were notorious drug users and had all sorts of crazy shit happening in that house. First off the language is a little coarse because it accurately reflects what happened. And I will for background tell you I'm a heterosexual male. I bought a condo in a new building a while back, but because I travel a lot with my job, I don't spend much time there. One day soon after I moved in, I meet this old dude, probably around 65 years old, in the elevator, and he asks me if I'm new to the building, and then adds that I should stop by his place for a beer someday. I say sure, whatever, but never do. About 6 months later this same guy in the elevator says, Hey you never stopped by for that beer, and I explain that I travel a lot, so I'm rarely here, and he then says you got time now. So rather than drag this on I say sure why not. So we get to his condo which is a floor below mine, and he says he doesn't have any beers that are cold. Geez okay fine. So I'm drinking this bus warm beer, and he skips the small talk, and asks me if I'm circumcised, point blank. Confused for some reason I answer that I am. Regret that to this day, I should have just left, but for some reason didn't want to be rude. So then he says he knows this Jewish couple and the lady is hot, and she likes big uncircumcised cork s. He says there are these twins boys with huge cork s that he knows, and they came over to his place one day and faked this chick while her husband and he watched. At this point I'm thinking what the fuck, and start to drink my piss warm beer faster. He then asks me if I would like him to invite this Jewish couple over so I can fuck this Jewish girl while they watch. At this point I've almost finished chugging my beer so I can GTFO and he adds and if you don't mind maybe we can lick your as whole while you're banging her. At this point I say yeah not really into that sort of stuff thank him for that warm beer and then quickly excuse myself from his condo run upstairs to mine and hope he doesn't show up at my door. So then about an hour later still sort of freaked out, I call some friends up and ask if they want to meet for dinner, just to get away from the place for a while. As I head out, this guy drives up to me in our parking garage and invites me up for spaghetti dinner, to which I only said sorry have plans my friends all chastised me for being too polite, and they are correct. But anyway, I spent the next 3 years not making any eye contact with that guy, and he left me alone after that. I still live in that building, and so does he. TLDR, some old swinger type tried to recruit me to his little sech club. 
TLDR at the top, bees I'd say this was 7 or 8 years ago, which would make me about 16. It was summer, I was at home. My parents had gone to visit some other family, and since I was a fairly respectable young man it was alright for them to leave me home alone for a day or two. Things were alright, just sitting around playing games in the basement, and I decided to get dinner. Our basement, it's the bottom floor, about half of it is in the ground and the other half is above, because we live on a hill, connects to our garage, where we have a big freezer, that we keep frozen dinners and such in. I headed in to get probably a hot pocket or something, I never said I was a healthy kid, but I heard this buzzing. I looked around and sure enough, there were something like 15 bees flying around the garage, and at least a dozen more dead on the ground. I couldn't tell how they'd gotten them, and there didn't seem to be anything in there they were after. I almost crapped my pants when a few started buzzing around me, but I was hungry damn it, so I nabbed a dinner, and got out pretty quick. My parents would be back tomorrow and I could just have cereal for breakfast, so I figured I'd just let it go for now. The night goes on, and I pretty much forget about the bees. It's getting late, and I decide to head to bed. I go up to my room, and I'm pretty exhausted, so I'm about to just flop right down fully dressed, and without even turning on the lights. Right when I get to the foot of the bed, though, I remember that I'm going to be working at a local theater summer program tomorrow, and there's this really cute girl in one of my classes, so maybe I should decide on an outfit now instead of getting dressed in a groggy dash tomorrow. I flick on the light, and I'm immediately glad I did. The first thing I notice is a bee weekly circling next to my bed. Almost as if it was waiting for me to turn on the lights and see, it spirals downwards and quietly dies on my end table. At that point I notice at least 20 more dead bees, a trail of insect corpses leading from the air vent in the corner of my room to my bed. I slept on the couch for the next week. I had many terrible experiences as a girl growing up in a bad neighborhood, this is one of them. Me and my best friend decided to grab McDonald's at 1 in the morning, because we were just that bored. We took the shortcut which I hated that led straight to McDonald's behind my neighborhood, consisting of fences and trees. Everything was fine, and we got our food, and as we were walking away, we saw an older man standing in front of the strip on his cell phone. My friend asked him if he had a cigarette, and he said no. We moved along, also deciding to take the safer way, by walking all the way around the strip, because it was a big road with frequent traffic, even though it was pretty late, and didn't make a difference. All of a sudden we looked beside us, and that man was riding on a red bicycle, and staring at us. We thought it was weird, laughed it off and kept walking. He said come with me. We said no. He continued to ask, and it got really scary. We tried to ignore him, and started walking faster, but he sped up. He tried to grab my friend's arm and my friend then kicked his bike over, and we started running. He rode his bike really fast, and went past us, did a U-turn, and was coming straight for us, for me. We just kept running hoping to pass him, and my friend did, but he came off his bike, and knocked me down on the ground. My friend realized I wasn't behind her, and started screaming at the top of her lungs, and rushed back at him full force without thinking, sort of looking like a crazy lunatic, ha ha ha. He then got up on his bike and rode away, never to be seen again. It wasn't the worst thing that had happened to me, but definitely creepy as fuck. Also I found out he lived in my neighborhood. I tried to get the cops involved many times, but they never did anything about it. Around two years ago I was involved with a girl with two kids. She was kind of nuts, but I liked her a lot, and I really liked being a dad, their dad wanted nothing to do with them. Five or six months later he started calling all the time, her ex-husband, at two or three in the morning. Drunk, sobbing begging her to come back. I told her to ignore it. The phone calls intensified. We took the kids to a movie one night, then we went to eat. When we came back we saw nothing wrong with the house. We put the kids to bed and walked into the living room when I noticed a kitchen knife stuck in the middle of the table, stabbed onto the table through my condoms. The police had no idea who it was and we had no proof. Someone broke the windows of my car and cut my tires. I got a friend request from this pretty girl on Facebook. Since my girlfriend was insanely jealous I never even considered adding this chick. She was so persistent. She had added my girlfriend as well, 
when I saw that I assumed she was her friend so I too added her. My girlfriend at the time gave away way too much info about us on Facebook, whereas I used it only so that I wouldn't have to give people my phone number. Her ex started showing up at the places she would go and mention on Facebook. We found out he created a fake account and was spying on us. The creepiest thing is that he sent me sexually charged emails trying to get me to meet up and write back. I obviously told my girlfriend about it because I thought it was funny. I have to say it was a huge blow to my ego when I found out it was her ex-husband. Oh wait it's not over yet. He started parking in front of our house. He would call, drunk out of his mind saying he is sleeping there to keep an eye on her and that he would drive into the house just to be with her. Finally I went up to the car to kick his ass. What you need to know about me is that I'm a bussy. I like to box, but I have been in like two fights my whole life. I walk up to the car and I'm about to drag him out when I notice he has a gun in his hand. He is faking sobbing and hitting himself in the forehead with his gun. I figured I can't go back into the house because my girlfriend and the kids are in there. So I politely ask him if he is okay, pretending to be concerned about him. He gets out of the car still holding the gun. He starts telling me he loves her and he wants her back. He hugs me and starts crying on my shoulder. For 20 damn minutes he is hugging me. I'm terrified. I was sure the faker was going to shoot me. I'm 6 feet 5 he is 5 feet 8. Yet I was trembling like a beach. He is drunk out of his mind. And he drops his gun. I push him into the car. And like the biggest idiot I pick up the gun and throw it in the car with him. And run back to the house. I called the cops. But they were very rude and basically brushed me off. I felt they were implying that I made it up in order to get him into trouble. Five days later I get a call from the police to come down to the station. He had been badly beaten while walking through the park. He says I sent some men to do it. First of all, I have a university degree in history and English literature. I don't have access to men who beat people in parks. The police cleared me and for a while everything was okay. My relationship was going well, I got to love the kids, everything was cool. Until one day the kids told me that mommy spent the night with her ex. I later found out she had been talking to another ex on Facebook. I loved the kids, so I looked the other way. I never told her I knew, but I kept an eye out. One night I got up to change one of the kids. After I was done I walked back into the bedroom and I don't know why, but I got really pissed off and I woke her up and told her I knew. We started to fight she started crying and I decided to go. She stopped me and said that she loved me and that she is scared. After she made the mistake she broke it off with him, but now he is acting and saying even crazier things. I didn't want to hear it and I started getting dressed. I was about to walk out of the house and she started walking to the bedroom. I heard a scream and I ran back. I saw a guy charging out of the bedroom. I ran after him, chased him down the street but couldn't catch or didn't want to. I had no idea what I would do once I did. I got back and noticed mud footsteps leading right up to the door of our bedroom. The nut job was listening to us fight. It wasn't her ex. It turned out to be his best friend. I guess there to send a message. So I stayed with her for the next couple of days. I took her to the police. I took her to court to help her get a restraining order. I helped her sue him for child support because I was really contemplating getting the fuck out. The kids were stopping me. I didn't want to leave them. Everything was cool and then I realized that she kept talking to her high school boyfriend. Not in the most appropriate of ways. And then I learned that she kept in touch with that maniac of an ex-husband through email. Finally I got the fuck away. Broke my heart. I still miss the kids a lot. Still feel guilty for leaving, but I felt I had no choice. She calls, texts, emails for months to come. I change my phone number, erase the emails. She tells me I got her pregnant, turns out to be a lie. She shows up at my house with the kids. I can't ignore them, so I say hi, play with the kids and beg her to leave me alone. I was very emotionally unstable. Didn't give a sheet about her, but was torn up about the kids. She stops hounding me for a couple of months. I park my car in the garage, and as I'm walking towards my building her ex-husband shows up. He is saying some macho Spanish bullshit. Construction worker, anyway, he is telling me to stay away from her. 
I comply and he leaves happy. A lot more stuff happened. Fine. It may not be as creepy as all of your stories. There were no child molesters or murderers. But you have to understand. Three years. Three faking years I dealt with all this. Having to basically move in with her for two years in order for her to feel safe. I'm trying to be a writer. I have a vivid imagination. Those three goddamn years were horrible. I kept imagining outcomes to this situation that terrified me to the core. It was like being on the edge for three years. Even now she emailed me and begs and I'm just so exhausted from all of this because I miss the kids and she won't let me let go. It gets harder and harder to say no. She is crazy. Everyone in her life is completely faked. But I feel terrible because, well if she breaks me in a year and I get back with her, I will have lost a year with those kids. I'd take a panty sniffing stalker over my hell any day of the week. Anyway, this is too long for anyone to actually read, so I guess I'm just writing it to vent. Definitely not as creepy as other stories, but here. Once I started dating my boyfriend, the expected influx of friend requests came in from his friends and families on Facebook. I don't usually add people I haven't met before, but since I figured they were close to him it was alright. One of the requests came from this girl Alyssa, who I'd seen, had posted on his wall occasionally. I figured she was a good friend of his, so I accepted her. This girl starts posting on my wall, Facebook chatting me, and commenting on pictures. Which was fine, I figured she must be a good friend of the boyfriend, and we'd be friends in the future. Well, as the relationship progressed, I realized that she used to be good friends with my boyfriend, but they hadn't really talked in a few years, yet this chick was still trying to be best friends with me. She posted really obnoxious and frequent Facebook status updates, so I decided to unadd her once I was sure that she wasn't really anyone significant to my boyfriend. After that, she tried re-adding me four times, she got rejected three times in one day, she found and followed me on Twitter and Tumblr. I have literally three followers on Tumblr, and it's clearly stated that it's a blog for a few of my best friends, so it took balls for her to so blatantly creep, especially after being an added on Facebook. She would comment right after me on boyfriend's sister's Facebook to ensure that I saw her posts, and whenever I went home with boyfriend, she would try to plan ways to encounter me. Like on weekends we'd go to his parents house, she'd try to get herself invited over. Finally, after two years of this, I saw her in person at boyfriend's sister's grad party. This Alyssa girl never introduced herself, and whenever I walked into a room she stopped talking, mid-sentence, and would just stare at me. It was so creepy. I have no clue why she was so shameless about social media stalking me. My only guess is that she had a crush on my boyfriend at some point and was trying to get closer to him through me or something. After a night at the bar, myself and two of my friends headed for home. One of them lives close by, so he walked home from there. The other and I each went to our separate platforms. While waiting for the train, a man came up to me and asked me for the time. He didn't even wait for my answer and started asking me about my nationality, my age, etc. I gave him quick and short answers while secretly texting my friend there's a guy bothering me on my platform, can you please come over and help me out, but it seemed he didn't get the message, so I rang him and hung up so he would look at his phone. The questions started getting creepier. He asked me, you have a good figure, how do you keep it, what do you consider inappropriate, what would you consider crossing the line for a guy, and the one that drove me over the line, has a guy ever forced his way with you? I ran away to my friend's platform, and got to him at the same time his train was arriving. I summed up my story as quick as I could, there's a creepy guy who asked me, if I had been raped before, I'm very scared, can you please stay with me? Unfortunately, he was a selfish jerk. He said but my next train is 15 minutes away. Get someone else on your platform, I'm sure they'll help you. And got on the train, leaving me on my own. I was shocked and dazed by what happened. I didn't know what to do, but to call my other friend who had just arrived at his house and tell him what happened. I didn't even know how that could help or what I expected him to do. He immediately came back to meet me, calmed me down. And called me a taxi, which now that I think about it, is what I should've done. Okay, 
This is nothing compared to the other sheet in this thread, but I just remembered it even happened. So I figure I'll tell the story. So the first week of college only freshmen were around for orientation, and I spent almost the entire time getting to know my helmets. The one thing I was still uneasy about was using the hall bathroom. Bathrooms at my school are co-ed. After a few weeks I stopped giving a sheet. Pun not intended. But a combination of that and the lack of privacy was something to get used to. So I'm taking my morning poop in the farthest stall at the end. There are four stalls in the bathroom, which was empty, when I came in. The doors stay open, so anyone coming in after would see the closed door, and now I was in there. I'm kind of zoning off when I look and see a foot hovering still under the stall. The foot of petite and dark toned, think Filipino woman. It stays still, and I stare at it for a good few seconds. I think, the fact and look up, and I look back down and it's gone. Afterwards I'm 90% sure I know who it was, based on the combined petiteness and skin tone of the foot. So this brings up a few questions. Why didn't I hear the person walking in? I was pretty zoned out the whole time, it's early in the morning, which is what makes this a weird memory. More importantly, why was the girl barefooted? What was she doing with her foot under the stall? Was it something creepy, since she knew the stall was occupied and had no reason to be outside it in the first place? TLDR Mysterious Foot I'm sure I have some creepier stories, but I was reminded of this one reading through the thread. My family's even was rear-ended by a drunk driver when I was 6 on the way to my piano recital. I was wearing a bow on the back of my head, and when my head was whiplashed against the headrest, I got a nice deep gash that bled all down my dress. Car accidents. Ick now. Anyway, my mom pulled me out of the car and set me down on the curb to wait for the ambulance. My grandmother was pretty sure her neck was broken, it was, so my mom was over by the van helping her. The car that hit us was a little yellow Volkswagen bug, and it had totally crumpled. I described it later that night as a squashed yellow raisin. So, I was sitting on the curb, in shock, covered in blood. The driver of the car that hit us, his head was also bleeding a bit, walked over to me, casually and slowly. He squatted down in front of me, looked at me, a smile spread across his face. He maintained eye contact for several seconds. Now, as an adult, it's easy to justify, he was in shock too. He was drunk. He was probably not really sure what all was going on. But got him if that wasn't a creepy experience for a 6 year old. I work at a ballpark, so there are lots of opportunities for creepy flirtatious situations to arise. Today was the creepiest, by far. So it was the mascot's birthday, so naturally all of us ushers had to wear birthday hats. These had large candles on top, looked totally goofy, and were awesome. I'm keeping mine forever. But anyway, I was standing in front of an elevator, watching a friend spot for a second, when a middle-aged guy took a picture of his son next to a Statue of Liberty dressed in our team's colors. Not creepy, happens all the time. It started getting creepy when the guy pushed his son, probably about 9 to 10 years old, next to me, and started taking a picture without saying a word. I figured it was the hat, since the statue couldn't be seen from where I was standing. He stopped taking the picture and told me, no preamble, put your arm around him. Okay, a bit pushy, but okay. His son and I grin, the picture is taken. We are not done. The guy says, kiss him on the cheek. Um, what? He is shy around girls. Just kiss him on the cheek. Well, I didn't really know how to say no to this. Keep guests happy at all times. And it was just a kid, just a peck. So I kissed his son on the cheek, which is the weirdest thing I've ever had to do at work. We are not done. He shows me the picture, it is as awkward looking as you would expect, and then says, you are a sleeper. I'm a sleeper? I probably should have known better than to continue the conversation, but it was too late. What is a sleeper? He leaned close to me and said you are a sleeper, because a sleeper is a great looking girl who covers herself up. See, you are not exposing yourself. I was wearing glasses, business slacks, a baggy red uniform t-shirt, black under armor, and this ridiculous hat. At this point a small group of press, including a pretty woman in a tank top, walk into the elevator room. Creepy guy indicates the woman. See her? She is not a sleeper. She is exposed. 
A sleeper is someone with exquisite looks who keeps it covered with clothes. So, you are a sleeper. With that, he nodded and walked away. The woman who was not a sleeper came up to me right after and asked, what was that guy saying? I told her, and we both stood there, super creeped out, until my friend got back. Of course she would choose that specific 5 minutes to go to the bathroom, haha. <laughs> and now I'm scarred for life. Okay one more. This one took place between 1 year and 6 months ago, while I lived with my beach of an ex-girlfriend in out old apt. We would share cooking duties, while the other would catch up on sleep, or be attending to other things in the bedroom. In a hoe, often times I would be cooking, and I would hear her leaving the room, crossing the living room to the kitchen where I was. We would talk, and she would come into the kitchen to help me with whatever I was doing, shove me playfully, or just talk to me. I swear to you, I cannot count how many times this would happen, and when I turned around she was not there. I would rush immediately to the room, and she was sound asleep. Scared me like hell at first, but eventually after never being physically harmed, it just turned into another damn babe. That crazy sheet happened again. One time in that same apt, it was my turn to crash out and her work. I almost always left the door open in case some paranormal sheet happened I could rush out and be with her. In a hoe, one day after about two weeks of inactivity, I decided hell, it'll shut the door and just crash out. She was cooking like four things at once. The noise would keep me awake. I'm in the room. The door opens, and I hear footsteps encountering my side of the bed, and she did her usual banze crash on the bed to get me up to join her. I told her I was too tired and could really use some sleep, all the while my eyes shut and head turned away point she is really wanting me to join her, and she lays down next to me and starts rubbing my stomach. I love that sheet. I said okay babe you win. I open my eyes, and she's not there, and the room door is shut. I bolt out the door to the kitchen, not there. I check everything. We had a biggest balcony, several closets, and only one bathroom. She was not there. She comes in 10 minutes later. She had been at the store around the corner buying things to cook up. This one was probably the scariest moment while we lived there. TLDR, my ex-girlfriend, may have been a faking ghost. About a year ago, I was at home alone with my sister, she was sat in the living room watching TV, and I was in my bedroom, which is downstairs next to the back door. Some weathered faced middle aged woman, skinny, wearing a tracksuit, popped her head through my bedroom door, holding the kettle from the kitchen, and she asked me if I wanted a cup of tea or a hot chocolate. I had no idea who she was, and I asked her, she replied I go to college with your sister. So I kinda shrugged it off and just said no thank you. She walked into my kitchen, and I could hear her faking around with stuff in there, so then my brain went into panic mode, and I walked past her through to the front room, and asked my sister who the fuck the woman was in the kitchen. My sister's face went pale, and she was like what are you talking about then the woman appeared behind me, holding the kettle, and asked my sister if she wanted a hot chocolate. So me and my sister stood up and started ushering her out of my house. She said oh, god, I must have got the wrong house. My friend from college told me to just walk in. I promise I haven't stolen anything. You can search my bag. We just told her to GTFO. Weird thing is she didn't steal anything. Who the fuck walks into some owns house where they have obviously never been. Not even shouting their friend who apparently lives there and start offering drinks to the people in the house. TLDR strange woman came into our house, made us drinks. When I was in high school, I came to my house that was somewhat secluded. It was surrounded by woods and part way up a bluff. We had a private driveway and no neighbors. Once I walked in the house, I went to the kitchen, turned on the TV, and grabbed a snack. As I was flipping through the channels I heard an odd beeping sound between each channel change. A little nervous, I went to grab the phone. As I was grabbing the phone I noticed the padlock on the back door was unlocked. Not thinking much of it, I locked it. When I put the phone to my ear to call, it was absolutely dead. I realized right then, someone was in the house. I was shaking so bad I dropped the phone went downstairs, grabbed the other cordless phone, a separate line before cell phone days, hastily I grabbed my keys and purse, and bolted out the door. 
As I did this, I talked to a friend of mine because I didn't know where my parents were and because I was scared sheetless to be walking outside in a dark wooded area. I got in the car and safely to my friend's house. In the meantime, I got a hold of my parents, told them my story, and they simply laughed at me, thinking that I was just overreacting. After they went through the house, I finally came home, they took me through every room and every closet, so I knew there was no one there. Then I began second guessing myself, thinking I was overly cautious. When in the kitchen I looked at the back door, I asked my parents if they use the back door at all tonight. They said no. The padlock which I locked earlier was now unlocked. A week later, my mom's car in the garage got broken into. Only after this happened did I tell them about the incident with the backdoor padlock. Finally, they started to believe me. I was never comfortable in that house again. When I was 17 a few of my friends and I went camping for spring break. I had never really gone camping, but one of the people, of four, hadn't we headed off to some place in Kentucky. I guess the story could kind of end there huh? We decided to go hiking the first day, and it was a very cool day. We obviously did not take flashlights, water or food. We hiked for hours. One of our friends, the more dominant personality, decided to go off trail at some point and we just blindly followed. Anyway, about 3 or 4 hours into this, we come up on a road. It seemed like it might have been more of a service road, but there was a guy in a van. He pulled up to us, 3 girls and 1 wimpy guy, and asked if we wanted a ride. Of course we did. After getting into the van, he was distracted by our friend who lead us off trail and was talking to him. I started to look around his van. This was clearly more of a home than a kind of transportation. And the more I looked the more creepy it got. Within a minute or two three of us knew we needed to exit the van. After a few minutes we got the attention of our friend who seemed to agree, based on whatever conversation she was having with the guy. She says to the guy, well we need to get going and he's like, nah. I'll take you guys. And then we all started getting insistent that he stop, but he was still driving. Finally my friend opens the door while he's driving, and he starts freaking out. So, as he slows down we all jump out and bust the fastest run into the woods you have ever seen. We never ran into him again, and about 3 hours later, in the dark, we saw light way off in the distance. After lots of cuts and bruises later we ran into some boy scouts camping. Probably the happiest I've ever been to see boy scouts. I didn't camp again for about 15 years. Convinced that camping was scary and exhausting. There was this one autistic kid during freshman year that one of my friends would basically used to get alcohol for us since we were freshmen. I thought this was pretty faked up and I said so. Somehow, after that I ended up alone for a few minutes because my friend had to check something but was really figuring out a way to ditch autistic guy. Well, autistic guy starts opening up about how he has a restraining order against him because of how he acts towards girls. A little terrified, I try and humor him and give him advice, which ends up being along the lines of try not to be creepy. A few years later, I'm searching for my name in Google because I had been published and I wanted to see if it would come up in search. To my horror, there was a whole page of Yahoo Answers questions with my name in them. I quickly figured out they were by autistic guy from freshman year. They were also recent, which was also creepy. They were all asking questions like Squawberry said I'm creepy how, do I not be creepy, and then totally unrelated questions like are Mormons satanic. Also Squawberry said I'm creepy I told him to take them down or something, and, sure enough, a week later I saw a Yahoo question asking Squawberry wants me to take these questions down, can she take me to court, or am I safe, what the fuck. It's not really creepy, per se, and it'll be lost to the ages, now that this thread is so big, but here's my story, a few years back, when I was a student, I lived in a house with a few friends in a quiet little town. This house was in a nice neighborhood with topiaries and cheat, and the town itself had a high median income for residents. We never really bothered locking the doors, when the house wasn't empty. It was a nice spring evening and the lot of us, and our respective girlfriends, eight people all together, four guys and four girls, were eating dinner and having a drink while watching some Gilmore Girls. 
I was having a tall pint of sea idea with ice cubes and had just polished off my plate of curry and was considering seconds. At this point my housemate, let's call him Marcus, walks in and says, very calmly, um, there's a guy in our kitchen. What? We ask, before following him out into the kitchen. Sure enough, standing there in our kitchen was a guy. He was probably in his 20s, muscular, and very obviously on drugs. He was wearing a filthy sweatshirt, and had a shaved head, and he refused to leave. At first we were polite, inquisitive, asking him if he could leave, but he was adamant that he would stay. He pushed past us into the living room and sat down. He blew his nose on a rag and tossed it on top of the Genesis games. We are starting to get a little worried, but he just seems like he's out of it and not a huge threat. We just need to get him the hell out of our house. Around this point he starts to become belligerent and it becomes increasingly clear that he is Polish. He tries to enter my bedroom, I stand between him and my room, he shouts some nonsense at me, so I close my door and barricade myself against it. He starts smashing at the door. Eventually he appears to give up. At this point the other people in the house have all gone upstairs and my other housemate, let's say his name is John, is standing on the stairs watching this guy. I get a text, whatever you do, don't come out of your room. I would later find out that, while the guy had stopped hitting my door, he was in fact waiting outside of it, trying to trick me into leaving. Eventually, he grew disinterested in me, and tried to get upstairs to the women. My friend John is thankfully good at being calm in these sorts of situations. He very leverly but sternly kept the intruder from getting up the stairs. The intruder became increasingly belligerent, shouting at John to hit me, before striking himself numerous times. We decided it was time to call the police. I was in communication with the folk upstairs over text and internet. When we told this guy that we were calling the police, he spouted off a stream of polish punctuated with a loud, fak fap yes. In the time between, when we called the police and they arrived, he wandered around the bottom floor. At one point I heard the distinctive tinkle of ice in a pint glass. Bastard was drinking my sea idea. Eventually, the police arrived, at which point he ran outside, and I guess they had to chase him down. He gave a false address to the police at first, but they eventually took him away and took statements from us. The man did not depart without leaving something extra behind. However, it turned out that everything, and I do mean everything, he had touched, was covered in a disgusting slime. We went around the entire house that night wiping down and spraying antibacterial everywhere this guy had been. I'm not sure what the origin of this slime was, whether it was just general filth or some altogether more insidious product, but it was faking gross. I guess the police just took him home, though, because we would occasionally see the guy around town. Thankfully, he never seemed to recognize us, but you can be damned sure we started locking our doors, even when we were in. TLDR, an uninvited Polish house guest stopped by one evening to slime on everything and drink my mother faking sea idea. One night, after a few drinks, I decided to walk back to my place. This was around 3 a.m. So, I said farewell to my two friends and started walking. For some reason, instead of taking my usual route though town, I decided to take a road just on the outskirts, a sort of bypass that has been there for a few years. Now, in my slightly tipsy state, I imagined this road being a mere 10 minutes of a walk from my house. Oh, how wrong I was. The road was a few miles long, I was wearing new shoes and everything was pitch black. This road only has a few lamp posts here and there. My feet were getting cramped and cut thanks to the new shoes and I could see barely a meter or two ahead of me. Anyways, after a good 15 or 20 minutes of walking, I just about see what looks like a shape on the footpath ahead of me. Keep in mind, as I said above, I could only see about a meter or two ahead of me. It was hard to make out, but it looked like a person. At first, I thought that this person may have been walking ahead of me, or, perhaps, towards me, but, nope, they were just standing there, absolutely stock still. The scariest thing was the fact that I couldn't make out any details, other than the fact that there was this sort of vague human shape figure that sort of stood out against the darkness. 
So, put yourself in my shoes, you're walking absolutely alone in pitch black darkness, after what seems like an eternity of walking, you see what looks like a lone figure ahead of you. They don't move, they don't make a sound. For all I know, it could have been anything, but, in my mind, I was absolutely convinced that this was some person just standing there, waiting to murder slash mug some passerby. Obviously, I was scared to bits and I quickened my pace. I passed by whoever it was, and I kept on walking at a quicker and quicker pace, until I made it back to my house. I have never been so grateful to be safe and sound within a house, like I was at that moment. I look back at that moment now and laugh, but I was scared beyond all imagining at the time. TLDR. Walking home. Alone. In pitch darkness. I see what looks like a human shape figure ahead of me. It is standing stock still, and it makes no sound whatsoever as I pass it by. Just out of college, I moved into a share house in DC where I didn't know my roommates. I moved in when no one was home and immediately went to a friend's for a welcome to the city dinner, drinks and what have you. Came home bust, closed my bedroom door, and went to bed. Awaken in the middle of the night to someone in the hall whispering Athena, Athena, I roll over and see a guy at my now open door, backlit by the hall light. I was mildly annoyed thinking it was just a drunken roommate or roommate's boyfriend. Athena isn't here, wrong room dude. I reply and the guy flies into an incandescent rage. Where is Athena? Are you faking her? Is she hiding from me? I step toward him into the hallway assuring him he has the wrong room and to just chill out. The commotion wakes up my roommates, a guy and girl, who come out into the hallway. The guy immediately yells leave, she's gone. And tells the female roomie, call the cops. The enraged yeller attacks the roommate, and he and I wrestle the guy out the door. While the cops are called, we block him from coming back in search for his missing Athena while furiously paces, and then in a fit of peak pulls the fire alarm in the front vestibule which screeches as the cops pull up. They take the guy away and tell us that he had enough crack on him to kill a menagerie of farm animals, that this guy was the adult ex of Athena who had my room before I moved in, and that he beat her and threatened to kill her, so she got him arrested and moved away, but he made a copy of her keys. Quite an exciting way to meet the roommates, but wait it's not over 3 hours later the guy is back, standing on the roof of cars in the parking lot outside our house screaming that he is sorry and that Athena has to see him. Cops called, dude taken away again. 24 hours later dude is back as I leave for work to apologize and wants to make it up. Sure whatever dude, it happens. I say and get the hell out of there before calling the cops again. Needless to say we had the locks changed that day. Since I'm late to the party probably no one will read this, but what the hell. This happened last week. I'm at the beach alone, just taking some sun, it's awesome to live in a city with beaches. I'm just chilling there, eyes closed, when I sense somebody close by. I look around, and notice the stereotypical jolly old guy, put a white beard on him, and suddenly it's Santa Claus on swimming trunks, only he was directly inside my personal space, most likely I noticed him by the shade he projected on me, just standing there while way too close and looking around. I imagine the guy's clueless or senile or something and ignore him. He just keeps walking around to different places around me, never leaving my personal space, while way too damn close. This continues for a few minutes, then he goes away. As I'm still a bit creeped out by this, I move to another part of the beach. About 15 minutes later, guess who was around? Yep, that guy. Close to where I was, a guy was receiving a massage from one of those persistent Chinese women. Tip, it's not such a bargain as it sounds. When they say massage for 5 euros, they'll charge that only for shoulders and offer a real massage for 20 euros. Have that in mind if you run into them at a beach. Also apparently for some more money they deliver happy endings but that's a rumor as far as I know. But I'm not inclined to find out. Then the old guy gets close to me, points at the guy being massaged, and says back there I would have given you that same massage completely free. So, not really knowing how to react to this one, and in a bit of shock I just fall back to no, thanks. He insists with a you sure, and I repeat myself. He goes away. I stay creeped out for a while. 
Later in the day I'm going home, I see a guy rising from the sand, working out his kinks, and stretching and all that, when I notice the old dude standing right next to him. Apparently the old dude delivered on his promise, and that guy got massaged. Good for him, somebody fell for his creepy old dude charms. This will likely never get read, but had one happen to me a couple months ago. I relocated to Indianapolis for a new job found a duplex in, what we found out later, was one step up from the pure ghetto, sketchy area of Fountain Square on state, for those who know the area. I'd get hustled just about every time I stepped out on my front porch for a cig, so I'd taken to smoking in the backyard that wasn't visible from the street. One night around 1am I figured it was clear to go out front. So I did, and about a minute out there, I see the skinny as white boy and his wife, who was probably about 5 feet 2 and 300 pounds walking up the street on the opposite side of the road he sees me and asks if I had a car. Since I'm suspicious in nature of people, having been screwed too many times in the past, 15x button 2500x. Shy, I responded with why. Oh, my wife is pregnant, and we need a ride down to street 3 miles up the road. Now, I had no way of knowing if this was real. The woman was so fat, she could have just been fat. Plus, who knows if they would have just carjacked me or given me some other sob story of where else I should've taken them so. I told them my wife was also pregnant, lie, and could go into labor anytime, and I couldn't leave her. TLDR was asked for a ride by a potential carjacker while I was on my own porch in a bad neighborhood. Have a second story I thought I'd share. Definitely creepy. I had just turned 18 and was still living at home with my parents. They had just informed me that my grandparents, on my dad's side, were coming to visit and would be staying with us. I was really excited cause I hadn't seen my grandpa since I was at least 10 and my mom's dad died before I was born. Some back info, my dad didn't know who his dad was most his life. He didn't find out until he was much older who his dad actually was. So one, he didn't know him all that well, and two, didn't spend much time with him. Anyway, we lived in a two-story house my parents were upstairs, my bedroom was downstairs at the time. After the first few days of my uncle and grandparents being there and getting to know them, I was happy about them visiting. My grandpa was old 90, I knew it would probably be the last time I'd see him. So I didn't think much of it when he would come down to my room and sit on my bed and try and talk with me. But you know, that feeling you get when something feels off? I was totally getting that. As the days went on he continued to come down to my room several times a day, would sit down on my bed and we would talk somewhat. Often he was content sitting there, no talking slash visiting, and just watching what I was doing. I think it was the third day when he was getting up to go somewhere and asked if he could have a hug. Okay innocent enough, he's my grandpa. Gave him a hug. Then immediately after he said, give grandpa a kiss. I gave him my cheek and he took hold of my face with his hands and planted a kiss smack on my lips. So at this time I'm slightly weirded out. I mean I didn't let anyone do that after I was like 10. But I wasn't used to grandparents and tried to shrug it off. But for the two weeks he was going to be staying with us. Every time he saw me heading to my room he would follow me down there. And one time he even asked me to come sit on his lap. I thought he wanted a quick hug, but he tried to kiss me again. So that was the final straw for me. I knew something was wrong here. I went and told my mom that he had kept following me down to my room most days and now he kept trying to kiss me and even requested I sit on his lap. I said mom I know I'm not used to the grandparents thing, but this feels weird, really weird. Reminded her I'm not a little girl here I'm 18 and it's kinda creeping me out. So, she immediately went and told my dad, who told my uncle. That same day I got pulled into my living room with my dad, mom, and uncle where they informed me my grandfather has had problems in his life with young girls and has even gotten into some trouble in the past. They told me to stay away from him and keep a distance the rest of his visit. Well first I was appalled. Why weren't they kicking him out of the house? But they decided they didn't want my whole family learning about it. They didn't want everyone's opinion ruined of him if it didn't have to be. 
apparently my uncle, grandpa's side, went up to him and threatened him saying, if he touched me again he'd kill him. I stayed away from home the rest of his visit, and we kept it a secret from the rest of the family, but I was so hurt. To one have to think about the situation in my head, all the happy memories of my childhood with the only grandpa I knew ruined, but two, that my parents wouldn't warn me he had a problem like this when he was staying in the room right down the hall from me. Even if he was just following me around and asking me to get closer, cuddly and kissy with him, they needed to tell me. He was a 90 year old man, so he couldn't have caused me any physical harm. Just emotionally. They said they knew his past, but never dreamed he would try anything with one of us kids. Sign so never underestimate sick people. TLDR, met my grandpa as an adult, and he turned out to be a sick old man. Video Game Creeper was playing a MMO over the summer about 4 years ago. I made a friend with this guy, who was one of the higher levels for the server. I talked to him on MSN, share a few pictures with him. Nothing sexual or anything, the guy was 4 years older than me. I had a bit of money to spare, so I bought him a subscription for 3 months, which was like $20 at the time, because he couldn't afford it. He got banned a few days later, because the GMs were douches. We still played together for a few months, but school started, and I start playing less and less. We stop talking altogether. Fast forward a few years. He messages me on MSN, and asks me how old I'm now. I was 16 at the time, 14 when we had played together. He's 20 or something now. He mentions that I look cute, and he keeps asking questions, like if he had my name, right and trying to recall where I lived. I was getting a really creepy vibe, so I started dodging questions. The next day he messages me again. This time he mentions that he's actually in a mental institution. He says it's total BS and he's fine, though. This story continues for a couple days and each day I piece together more and more information. Each day he progressively sounds crazier and crazier. He says he was put in the institution because everyone in his little town hates him. They think he's a pedophile because he talked to me two years prior. A pedophile because of me, UHH. What were you doing telling people about me in your town? That'd make you sound like a pedophile? He was saying that he kept running away from the institution and they were going to kill him. I told him he was ridiculous. You can't just kill someone like that. But he said everyone hated him and they'd get away with it. I had enough and stopped responding. He tried to message me for a few days, but I didn't respond and just blocked him. I told one of my closer friends about this. He said the guy was trying to troll me. I really hope he was trying to troll me, or else he was one mentally unwell creeper that had a thing for me, and I shudder to think what was going on in his head. I kind of worry what might have happened had I given him information on my location. When I was in 8th grade I went to the school dance with some friends. We were all young and too nervous to talk to girls, so we just kind of stood around talking. While there these two girls approached me and said our friend likes you, can she come dance with you later? My friends looked at me in shock and I was taken aback, so I started out a why yeah, sure, not even knowing what this girl looked like. Well, about a minute later a slow song starts playing and the two girls come back with a third. She doesn't say anything, just puts her arms around my shoulders and starts swaying to the music. I put my hands on her hips awkwardly and follow along. I ask her what her name is, and she tells me. I start to say mine, but she already knows it. Strike one. I was a little creeped out, but she was cute, so whatever. After the dance I left, because I had to walk home, about 3 miles. I saw her at school a couple times over the next week, but she stayed in her small group of friends and I never worked up the nerve to approach. Every day I would walk home from school. Sometimes I took the bus. One weekend, about two weeks after the dance, I'm in my room playing video games. My mom comes in and says someone is here to see you. It was that girl. Somehow she had found out where I lived. Strike two. I was even more creeped out. I talked to her for a minute and she left. Over the next several weeks, though, she would sit on my front lawn and wait for me to come out of the house or get home. One weekend I was at my dad's house and my mom told me that the girl had spent 4 hours sitting on the lawn waiting for me. 
Even after my mom told her I wouldn't be home for a few days. Eventually she calmed down. Stopped coming by. All that. I even got a girlfriend someone who would hold hands with me. One day the creepy girl say. And she ran off crying. After we made eye contact. I felt pretty bad. But immediately forgot about it. She was cute. But scared me a little. Well the next day I came home from school to a stack. Several hundred sheets. Of paper. All of them had her first name and my last name, things about me that she liked, and so on. The last 50 pages or so were about how depressed she was. It was majorly creepy. I actually never saw her again. This one time in 4th grade, I was sitting out during PE, because I had just gotten stitches on my back, small dermatological procedure, and my PE coach was sitting next to me. My stitches started to itch, and I suppose I absentmindedly complained about it. Coach said, want me to scratch it for you? He didn't really wink, but he raised his eyebrows and smiled a little half smile. Also, I recently went to volunteer at this foreign organization, and I had to spend a day doing some paperwork with an older man about 30 to 40 years old. There was some volunteer field trip that day, and the man kept saying that I should go on the field trip with him, that it would be so fun, and I would enjoy it. I said that I was too busy that day, even though I wasn't, and I had kind of wanted to go. He hadn't really done anything particularly creepy besides complimenting me heavily and asking me a lot of questions. I was used to that by then, being an American volunteer in a rural foreign organization, though he did ask me if I had a boyfriend, and I promptly told him that was inappropriate. But some gut feeling of mine strongly persuaded me not to go. I went out of the room and came back a while later, only to find the man still sitting where he'd been. I asked him why he didn't go on the trip since he'd seemed so excited about it and he just shrugged and said he was busy too. A week or so later, I was in my dorm late at night and my phone started ringing. Of course it was his number. I was using a different phone there so I was not too careful about handing out my card and he gave me his. That really freaked me out. And when I came back to the states, I saw that he demoled me, again, my big mistake in giving my email address to him, pleading for me not to forget him, and telling me how he had no friends in America, and I was so beautiful and smart yada yada. I wrote him back telling him not to ever contact me in such an unprofessional sense. TLDR, creepy nosy old guy tried to persuade me to accompany him on volunteer field trip, then stayed behind, when I told him I wasn't going can't help but feel like I avoided something awful. Then he called me late at night and sent me an unsettling email. I transferred recently to a big university. I had left a lot of drama behind me at my last place and was frankly pretty sick with people in general. They disgusted me almost to the point that I was pretty sure I never wanted to talk to any of them ever again. I made a point to make a fool of everyone around me. I noticed that if I kept my voice flat, nobody paid attention to what you said. You could insult the person sitting next to you and they wouldn't even blink. I did this once or twice to the amusement of the road, whom I didn't care in the slightest about. I did it to win a bet that people are sheet and have no regard for your wishes or what you actually say. I move in quietly, so quietly that my rat doesn't even know I've moved into the building until two weeks before the end of the semester. I go the entire semester without saying hello to anyone, except my long distance then girlfriend in the rare family phone call. The last day, I get a knock on my door. The person across the hall had tracked me down by checking my iTunes library, finding out that I was a nerd like her, and that I had good taste in anime slash music, the soundtrack to Cowboy Bebop. She demanded to come in and chat with me and was quite cross with me for not introducing myself. She then proceeded to check every door in the entire complex including ones that she didn't have access to and determined that mine was the one that had it work by finding out that only our building shared library and by deducting that since my name was on the library and not on my or anyone else's doors that the blank door was mine. I suppose this only proved my point about people not caring about what your wishes are. In the end, though, I came around and became a bit more sociable. TLDR, Tan, Sunglassed, Old Creeper Store stalks me and shows me penis pictures asking for a rating. 
Management would not help me. Ugh. Working retail. Had this awful customer come in very frequently every time a new TV came out, he had to have the newest technology. He was a douche. 55 ish He told me 45. Ha. Huh. Gold chain. Sunglasses always on inside. And that creepy, orange streaky tan. Extra rub since we were in as. Now I'm faking great at my job, and, being a young lady, I was a prime target for him to creep on while obtaining the things he liked. I didn't know he was a creep, at first. I had to be nice to everyone anyway, and I'd grown to become very good at seeming intrigued by and appreciative of any weirdo customer. This guy, Barry, offered me a job after our first interaction. I politely declined because of the creep factor, but he insisted he'd pay more, I'd work less, blah blah, etc etc, so I give him my number intending to say thanks, but no thanks. Soon he starts requesting to see me. He knows my schedule. Texts me at all hours telling me to meet him at these high-end bars and clubs, offering me designer clothes, and occasionally asking business-related questions at 2am. I ask him to please keep things professional. I speak with my manager about it, his name is Paul. Paul blames me for giving out my number. I tell Paul I don't want to work with Barry anymore, because he's freaking me out. Barry, of course, comes in again, and asks for me, since I know his paperwork and orders, and I'm hiding in an office, but he waits. Ugh. At this point, even management hates dealing with him, so they told me to suck it up, and help him out. He's scrolling through pics on his iPhone and tells me his new things is to pick up chicks at a bar by showing them pictures of his penis and then they go home with him. I sternly say, please don't do that to me, I'm not interested. He replies, of course not, but look at my huge house. Shows me, shows me the next of his girlfriend, car, and I nod and smile trying to get back to his order. We were standing next to one another on the sales floor, not separated by a counter or anything. Then he says check out this one. His gross, wrinkly cork and balls. He insists I rated 1 to 10. I decline, irritated. He pulls up another. Come on, rate it. I know you want it. I run off tell my managers, who don't help me. They just want me to finish his sheet. I was in disbelief. I made a big gruff inventory guy stay with me for the remainder. After, I tell the GM who promises he will no longer be allowed into the store. Lies. He was in, and they made me help him three times after that, while he made crude comments to me about being cold to him, and always having someone else there with me. He still texted me, and would ask for me. I'm so glad I quit. Ugh. A few years back on the night before Valentine's Day, my friend, my girlfriend and I were walking down the street next to a parking garage. I live in a pretty populated suburb, and it wasn't that late at night. All of a sudden we see a man leaping and bounding down the street, screaming nonsense and punching signs and walls. Obviously, we stare at him, while we continue walking. He passes us, and we forget it. A second later I hear running footsteps so I turn, and the guy's face was an inch away from mine, and he started yelling at me. I was so surprised, that I just backed away. What ensued was a 30 minute encounter with this guy saying the most random things ranging from insults to sexual things to my girlfriend. He kept wanting us to slap him and do other things, similar to Mel Gibson in South Park, if you want a reference. All this time there were cars leaving the parking garage, and every car that drove past I would signal the driver to help, but they just kept driving past. Eventually he backed us into a car, and then put his hand behind his back, like he had a gun. He was laughing maniacally and got closer and closer to me. So I kept backing away around the car. During this time my friend pulled out his phone and ran across the street to call the cops. The guy saw this, made some odd noises and chased him. A few minutes later I see my friend and the guy do a bro hug and the guy runs and skips away, screaming and doing cartoony laughs. A few minutes later the cops showed up but they never found him. At the time my friend had a black eye he had gotten by accident. When the guy chased him and pinned him up against the wall, after saying a bunch of a sheet for a minute, he asked him who gave you that black eye, some bussy, and my friend responded no, my dad the guy instantly changed and said something along the lines of sheet bro, my dad hit me too, hugged him and ran away tldr got trolled by some crazy guy for about an hour before he disappeared into the night. 
TLDR when I was 3 a random passerby threatened to kill me and my baby brother with a knife in front of my mum. The police caught him and beat the sheet out of him. When I was about 3 and my little brother was only a few months old, my mum was walking into town with me toddling along beside her and my brother in his pram. Some guy walks up to her, pulls out a knife, and says in a cold way that I remember vividly to this very day, if I see one more baby in this town, I'm going to kill it then walks off. I remember mum being a wreck afterwards and some random passersby who witnessed it comforting her. But I don't remember anything else about what happened. I later found out that the police arrested him that night and my mum and dad went down to confirm it was him in the loop. Apparently the guy had resisted arrest and was pretty messed up. I'm not one for extrajudicial punishment, but to this day, I'm now 28, I can remember the effect it had on my mum, and part of me is glad the police explained to him how they don't like that sort of thing. Okay, so a couple years ago I had this boyfriend that I met on an onidate. He was a cool guy, but he got high a lot. I'd never done pot in my life. Smoking kinda makes me feel like death. So you know, fuck it, and had friends that were into a lot of the same. I lived in court, he lived up in New York, and we'd take the train to hang out every week when I was off from work because uh, he obviously didn't have a job. So one night, it's my boyfriend, his best friend, the three of us were all pretty close, and another kid they knew who sold them drugs, basically, just hanging around. The other kid, I think his name was like, Cassie or something, had a sale to make, so we hopped in the car and drove a couple hours to this apartment complex which I think they said was a formal mental institution that had been converted years ago. It certainly looked that way, nice on the outside, shady as fuck on the inside, with lots of straight corridors and featureless, well, everything. We eventually get to this guy's apartment and man, is he a goddamn wreck? He's in his 30s, we were all 25 or under, and sitting there in a tight white t-shirt, some white underwear, and a, a smile, I guess. He has a huge belly, and is generally just what you assume a forever alone drug addict looks like. The whole complex looked like rape slash stabbing central to begin with, but his smelly, unkempt apartment was the worst of it. He was totally faked up on god knows what, and he kept staring at me, like I was a goddamn turkey leg full of oxycontin. tin. It was scary. I don't know how long we were there for, but it was so uncomfortable. There was a lot of commotion in the hall, and I kept expecting something bad to happen. I knew my boyfriend was a good guy, but he caved kinda easily to peer pressure, and I was like, fuck, I'm gonna get beaten slash drugged slash fake slash something here, being the only girl and the only person not high off their ass, and so it was a very anxious few hours, or maybe it was just an hour. Who knows. It ended with Cassie selling the guy some heroin and us all going home. A few days later he odd and died. Oh well. My ex rumored is a sleepwalker. I know of only two incidents in which this has happened. The first incident is not creepy. He just got up from his room, walked out the door, and fell asleep in the parking lot. Didn't remember it, which is when he told me his sleepwalking problem. The second time it happened, I was asleep on the couch. It was about 3.30 am, and I felt someone trying to move my pillow. I wasn't completely conscious at this point, but I was starting to wake. The person sat down next to my head. At that point, I was fully faking awake. It was my roommate. I asked hey man, what are you doing? He replies hey man. Look, I can, I know we had a long talk about this before, then he started saying incoherent strings of words which is, when I figured out he was sleepwalking, I know we had this talk about how you are the inferior race, and I'm better than you, don't take it personally, but I'm probably, more babbling, going to have to take you out. Naturally at this point, I sat upright, feeling a bit nervous. As soon as I moved my head, he slunk back into the couch, which is when I also realized he had a shirt, shoes, sock, and no faking pants or underwear. I couldn't bring myself to be pissed, because I know that when he wakes in the morning, to being naked and me telling him that his subconscious believed that I was an inferior race to him, and that he was going to have to take me out, that he will never live this down. 
I was sightseeing in Prague after a long year of working as an English teacher in Czech Republic, and I had decided to go on a pub crawl in an effort to not be a weird loner. Well I'm not really one for bars, but I had a good enough time, and I was walking home fairly buzzed at about 3 or 4 in the morning through downtown Prague. There were a few people still wandering the streets, but it was mostly deserted. I notice a woman cross the street and make her way towards me. I take stock, and the woman is easily over 40. My memory probably makes her look worse, but she was wearing way too much macup and pretty trashy clothes. Most women I'd met in Czech were, if anything fairly fashionable. She starts saying stuff to me in Czech, which I had only picked up a few words here and there. I keep trying to walk past her, and she followed me down the street. When I intoned I didn't speak Czech she starts saying sexy time, yes, and started groping at me as I started walking faster. I'd never for sure encountered a prostitute, but I got her admit I was not interested in buying what she was selling. I did my best to walk faster, but she kept at trying to touch my penis. I was flaccid and very uncomfortable, but she did eventually give up and target a couple who was walking the other direction after a few minutes. I honestly think I was more uncomfortable with the fact I could not communicate my disinterest. TLDR, got groped by a prostitute walking to my hotel in Prague. And not the good kind. Guess this is more of a close call, but in hindsight, it makes me extremely uncomfortable to think about. There was a guy my brother worked with for a few years, and he just sort of became a family friend. We saw him around a lot, and in early high school, around the age of 15, as me and my girlfriend started experimenting, he became the person that you could talk to about anything. So I privately asked him about Sech and all of that as things got more serious with my girlfriend, whom I expected to lose my virginity to. He told me about condoms, and then told me he could tell me what type of condoms to buy if I sent him a picture of my penis. I thought it was weird and wouldn't do it, though he tried convincing me that my brother and his friends all showed him their penises, so it was totally alright. I still wouldn't, and over time he told me about how he was doing editing for a born site and making good money, and he told me that if I sent him a series of photos of undressing and master baiting for the site, then he could get me like a $100 gift debit card anonymously and no questions asked especially if I needed some extra cash or something. After these conversations, I sort of just stopped talking to him, and looking back on it years later, it makes my stomach sink to think that he very possibly could be a pedophile, and it scares me even more to think of how many 15-year-old kids he was trying to, and maybe even getting pictures from. Nobody has really heard from him in a few years. Even weirder, my mother always told me that him being around her children made her uncomfortable, as if he would try to do something to us, if given the chance. TLDR I might've almost gotten too close to a pedophile, who was a family friend, but maybe not. Lulz. Okay, we are about 1500 comments in, but I feel the need to contribute anyway. This wasn't done to me so much as near me, but I was on a flight home from university for some break or another. I had a window seat, there was a college age guy next to me, and then another college age girl next to him. We all briefly chatted after boarding, and then find separate ways to amuse ourselves. I pulled out a book and started reading, the guy next to me had a laptop out, and the girl was listening to an mp3 player with her eyes closed. Suddenly, the guy snaps his laptop closed, whips out the napkin he was handed with his complimentary beverage, pulls a red crayon out, and starts writing. I keep pretending to read, but I'm stealing glances at what he's writing. Mile high club. He slowly folds the napkin, and then slowly slides it over to the girl in the aisle seat. She opens her eyes, looks down at the napkin, opens it, reads it, and turns bright red. She crumples it up crams it in her seat pocket, and pushes the flight attendant call button. She has a quiet word with the stewardess, who then leaves, and comes back with a couple of air sickness bags, and ushers her off to an empty seat near the back where the restrooms are. Meanwhile, the guy with the laptop acts as though nothing has happened, though he seems slightly agitated. He spends the rest of the flight trying to talk to me. So I'll start with the statement that this happened to my brother, but I'm in the house where it occurred, and he doesn't read it. 
My mom owns a very old house in central Illinois. It was once used as a boarding house in the 19th and early 20th centuries for people traveling between the coasts or up through Illinois to Chicago. Personally, I have experienced weird things here since I was a child. Voices, noises, etc etc. But when I got old enough to stop believing in the supernatural it all kind of stopped and I chalked everything up to a child's imagination in an old house. My older brother however has never gotten over the story I relay here. When I was around 13 I stayed at my friend's houses a lot over weekends. I was in and out of the house often and my brother, who was 17 or 18 at the time, and didn't really care what I was up to, never kept track of my comings and goings. One Friday he actually comes home early enough to catch family dinner which I'm at, but will be leaving after. He eats, excuses himself and then goes to his room. I finish eating and leave to go to my friend's house. Around midnight he gets thirsty and goes to the kitchen to get a glass of water. We have a lot of windows in our home, and in an effort to not bother anyone my brother walks through the house using the diffuse light from outside to guide himself from his room to the kitchen. He walks into the kitchen and sees a boy of around 13 sitting on the counter. He later tells us that he thought it was odd that I would be there in the dark. I may or may not have been scared sheet less of the dark, but he starts to say something when the hairs on his neck stick straight out and he does a double take at the kid. The kid is dressed in a 19th century dressing gown, is super pale, and most definitely isn't me. My brother stares at the kid and notices that he isn't quite solid, but is more opaque. My brother said that he could see both through the kid and through the window he was sitting in front of to the outside. As soon as my brother becomes cognizant of what's going on he faking bolts. He runs into my mother's room and wakes her up in the process. She asks what he's doing and he can barely respond but manages to ask for some covers. After getting a few covers he stands there completely still for what he claims was about an hour before he can even move. He decides to man up, but when he takes a step towards the door he hears two large creaks in the hallway, as if someone is walking down it. My mom wakes up in the morning to my brother, wrapped up like a cocoon in the blankets she gave him on the floor next to her bed. My mother has confirmed the parts of the story that involve her, and she said that he looked absolutely terrified that night. To this day my brother avoids sleeping in my mom's house, and if he does, will not leave his bedroom at night. TLDR. My brother saw a ghost in my mother's house, where I will be staying for the next few weeks edit. My brother is 33 and sticks to this story, has never admitted to being drunk or on drugs when it occurred, refuses to be alone in this house, has never claimed to have experienced anything like it anywhere else, and says that if it weren't for that experience he wouldn't believe in ghosts. Just remembered another, when I was about 11, they built a halfway house for such offenders in my town, opposite Daca Center. Yeah, not very bright. As part of the whole reintegration to society thing, the residents were encouraged to do things like use the library, you get an hour a day online free. A lot of kids went every day after school, me included. I kept seeing guys talking to the kids, and after a while one of them sat down next to me and started asking me questions about what I was doing, that kind of thing. I had no manners, so I sort of half answered and mostly ignored him. He was creepy, and I was busy. Then one of the librarians called me over as I was going home and said not to tell anyone she talked to me because she could lose her job. They're absolutely not allowed to disclose that these people are such offenders, but that I shouldn't talk to that man or his friends because they're not safe people and they're from the house down the road. Next time I was there he starts talking to me again, asking me if I want to go to the next town with him because he's going to the music shop. I said look, I'm busy, leave me alone. Or something fairly blunt like that, and he did leave me alone. Eventually, they got barred, because several of them were asking the kids to go to town with them, and pestering them and stuff. But seriously, reintegration is one thing, but who the hell thinks what do pedophiles need to be useful members of society? Lots of contact with unsupervised kids. I was about 11 I think, having a sleepover with my best friend. We loved horror movies and stories, so we were reading a spooky book she brought over. 
My mom had just had lipo and was on heavy painkillers. I think it was codeine at the time, but I'm not positive, and was watching TV in the living room. So we were trying to be quiet, so she didn't know we were awake faking around. As we were reading to each other, the door shut, we hear a scratching noise at the door. A little creeped out, but thinking my mom was just messing with us, I yell at her that it was funny but to stop. She walks away, but a few minutes go by, and it happens again only this time in a very creepy voice she tells us, if we don't come out she's gonna burn the house down. Now I really yell at her to stop, but she doesn't go away. She continues to say this until finally we hear her walking away again. We slowly open the door to make sure she's gone and take off to the bathroom and lock the door, laughing cause we think she's playing along. Next thing we know she's back a third time, but this time she sounds cold come out now girls, I want to play. Now the next part is what freaked me out the most. We had a towel slash laundry door thing where you can open a little door that leads to the linen closet if you need a towel after the shower etc. She pushes it open until the lock catches it and shoves a knife through and flings it open. Her eyes look through my soul, cold and dark, they looked right through me. She stared at us for what seemed like forever. We froze. Eventually it seemed like she just lost interest and slowly turned and walked away. We sat in the bathroom for what seemed like eternity. I decided I was gonna make a run for it and go wake up my dad. I booked it through the house and ran into their bedroom and shook my dad awake. He just told me to go back to sleep. Bummer. I walked back out and my mom, back to herself, told me my dog sheet on the floor and I needed to go pick it up. The next morning I asked her if she remembered anything. She told me I was imagining things and that she never left her bedroom. I never brought it up again. Very interesting thread this. Most of the creepy things that happened to me have been due to my overactive imagination. Most of the times, I would be in awe of what my brain had concocted, but this one time, I scared the sheet out of myself. It was a friend's birthday party, so he threw a house party. He didn't have a laptop, only an iPod, so he asked me if I could get my laptop so he could use it for the music on his terrace. His place was close by, so I decided to walk it. The party itself was amazing. We had a lot to drink, stopping only to escort some women home. By the time we were back, the party was over. Me and my friend decided to drink and eat for some more time. Before we knew it, it was 5am. That was when we decided to call it a night. After cleaning up, my friend asked whether I needed to be dropped. My first thought was dogs on the road. I stay in India and there are dogs everywhere. Packs roam at night, and it is unsafe for anyone on a bike or cycle let alone walking. There have been times when dogs actually jump up to the windows of cars. But I decided not to make him go through the trouble, and decided I would walk. I walk a short distance to the main road and head down the direction my flat is in. At this time during the morning, there was not a soul on the road, not even a dog on the road. The crisp cold breeze helped me clear my head and soon I was relaxed. Half through my walk, I heard somebody speak. Do you have the time? I looked around and saw no one. Then I heard it a second time and saw a guy. He was dressed like an Indian farmer and had a shovel in his hands. My first thought was that he would steal my laptop. The second he would take my life. I was paralyzed with fear. And before I realized it, I was running. I ran the fastest I had ever done for quite some time. I reached the entrance to my apartments and found the gate locked. I opened the latched, consciously trying not to look behind. I opened the gate and run straight for my flat. I closed the door behind me and looked through the peephole for the next 5 minimums. It was at that point that I started to relax. I'm adding my brother's story and then I have to get some damn work done. My brother lived in the basement of a house during his 5th year of college. It was a completely finished basement, but got obviously dark down there during the night. Several people lived in the house with him, and a couple of them he didn't know terribly well before he moved in. Well, turns out one of the girls had issues. As the semester progressed, one of his housemates, Sally, don't know her name, but that works pretty well, started kinda talking nonsense all the time. On top of this, she stopped sleeping for the most part. 
he'd lay in bed at night and hear her running through the floors above her talking and laughing to herself. She would also disappear for hours and a couple days at a time, so he never really knew where she was at any given point. One night, he falls asleep in bed with the TV on. He wakes up during the night for some reason and Sally is standing next to his bed. He opens his eyes and looks at her, and she says you didn't hear me knocking. She starts laughing, and then runs up the stairs. My brother is freaked the fuck out for obvious reasons. A couple days later, my brother comes home, and the last of her stuff is being taken out of the house. Turns out she literally went schizo and her parents came and moved her out. If my memory serves me correctly, I guess she had been diagnosed in the past, but it was managed with medicine. She must have went off her meds. This was during spring break in 5th grade for me, and I still remember it vividly. We were out on the east coast, visiting various attractions around Boston. We took a train out to Concord to see the old revolutionary battleground there, which was pretty neat. After seeing the memorial and bridge, we proceeded up to the visitor center, which was built on an area which would have been fought upon during the battle. We check all this out, and I go into the lavatory to use the bathroom. I'm sitting in the stall, and it's completely quiet in there, save for the dull whirring of the ventilator fan. No voices or footsteps, nothing. Also, I can look under the stall, it's a fairly small bathroom, and I can see by the lack of feet that there's nobody else in the room. So there I am, minding my own business, when I hear very distinctly three loud knocks on the stall door, as if someone wants to get in. The strange thing is, there was another stall open. Even stranger, I was looking at the floor at the time, and I saw no feet in front of the door. Confused, I called out hello, hoping I'd get an answer. As no answer was called out, I soon became terrified that a revolutionary soldier ghost would bust into the stall and kill me where I sat, just like Elvis. Needless to say, I finished up as fast as I could and dashed out of the bathroom as fast as I could. It's still quite vivid in my memory as one of the oddest, creepiest, and most inexplicable events in my life. I still have no explanation aside from the paranormal as to what happened, and this is coming from someone who is sort of skeptical about all that stuff. TLDR I was in a bathroom on an old battleground, here knocks on the door, nobody's there. In high school, one of my male friends confessed he had a crush on me and wanted to date. I reminded him that I had a boyfriend and that I really enjoyed his company as a friend. A few days passed. I came home from work one day and there was my friend sitting on my front stairs with two dozen roses. At first, I just thought, or, romantic and felt bad. Then he walked up to my car, threw the roses on the ground, stomped on them and said, where the fuck have you been? Work. I walked 6 miles from my house to get here and then waited for 4 hours. Oh. I just stood there. Then he reached behind him, pulled out what looked like a tie box, handed it to me and said, this is for you, and stormed off, presumably to walk home. I opened the box and there was a spiral Y knife looking thing inside with a tag that said, it's a sacrificial dagger, and then a heart with his name on it. School was awkward the next year. My mother told me the story of how she got stalked by a taxidermist when she was a teenager. So it's about 1973 or so, my mom's 16 and she works at a gas station. She sees a lot of regular customers come in all the time and they come to know her, which is cool. But then there's this older fella who talks to her for awkwardly long periods of time. At first he's harmless, just making pleasant conversation. Then things get a bit weird, because he starts inviting her out to places, though she kindly declines. One day, he comes in, and gives her a small piece of rabbit fur. Turns out the guy's a taxidermist. My mom thanks him, awkwardly, and he shuffles on his way. He comes back a few days later with another bit of fur, this time it was something more elegant, like a muskrat or beaver, and says that it would look nice on her, and he could make her a scarf or something. My mom's getting weirded out, but doesn't really know what to do, so again she just kindly declines the offer. A few days go by, and then the old creepy taxidermist comes in again, and this time he tries to give her a whole stuffed weasel. My mom gets a bit more assertive, and tells him she really doesn't want any furs or dead animals. The taxidermist leaves with his weasel. 
Later that day, my mom finishes her shift and heads home. She pulls into the driveway and gets out of the car, only to turn around and see the taxidermist had followed her home and is now sitting in his car at the end of the driveway. Thoroughly freaked out, my mom runs into the house and tells her parents about the creepy taxidermist. My grandfather was one big tough some beach and immediately goes outside and storms up to the taxidermist in his car. My mom never found out what my grandfather did and all he ever said was we had a friendly little chat. He won't bother you again. Sure enough, my mother never saw the creepy taxidermist again. She doesn't talk about it much, but to this day I think she gets weirded out by animal fur. When I was in middle school, one of my best friends started dating a girl that he met on the internet. She would send him these pictures of her, and to be honest she was hot as hell. Well the extent of their relationship was played out over MSN Messenger, this was before anyone had webcams. One weekend I was sleeping over at said friend's house, and he got invited to sleep over at his girlfriend's house, it would be their first time meeting in person. He was saying that I was at his place, so he couldn't his girlfriend mentioned she had a friend for me, and started sending pics of this other girl. I kept saying I didn't think it was a good idea, and that we shouldn't go. My friend and I had a massive fight over it, and settled on not going. About a week later they broke up, when my friend found out that she wasn't real. It was some older guy trying to get my friend over to his house. We never really talked about it. It scared the hell of out both of us. TLDR. Saved my friend from being a rape victim. Long story short. This takes place over a little less than two years at university. I meet a socially awkward guy at school through a club. He has a stutter and I think he thinks it makes him stand out slash be weird when, in fact, it really doesn't. He's pretty passive aggressive and always assumes that when anyone has a problem it is with him and it is because they hate him because he has a stutter. These are all things I learned about him from observing his behavior at the club's first outing. We all went out for sushi together as a meet and greet. Somehow, he gets a hold of both my email and phone number. As a grown woman, I have to have my father talk to him to tell him that his calls are not welcome at any hours of the day slash night. We both chalk that up to him being so awkward that he just doesn't understand. He's not threatening or creepy in the slightest, and he apologizes profusely and says that he'll stop calling, which he does. It's pretty obvious from the way he keeps trying to hang out with me over the next few months that he's interested. I'm not. I had just gotten out of a long term relationship and was not in any kind of mood to date anyone. I tell him this to spare his feelings so that he'll understand that it's nothing to do with him and all the problems he feels he has but doesn't really and is 100% because I'm still very hurt and have to focus on myself for a while. He seems to back off. We still see each other at club activities and around school, but always in group settings and we get along just fine. About a year later, I'm out on a lunch date with a nice guy who works at the local comic shop. Over lunch, he brings up this really creepy guy who's been stalking one of his friends for the past couple months. She had to call the police for a restraining order because she was not sure he was safe. She and I share the same name. We are the same height, same eye color, both wear glasses, both have very very long brown hair, both study the same subject in school, both have very similar interests, he even goes so far as to say that the first time I walked into the shop he thought I was her, we got to chatting, after I responded to her name and that's why we decided to go out for lunch. Through a series of questions, I figure out that this is the same guy. He tells me some stuff that is pretty disturbing, but I decide to snoop around on my own, thinking his friend may have exaggerated and the weirdness may not be as great as it seems to be. Through the course of my snooping, I discover that this guy has been pestering one of my best friends through email. She was studying at a school several hours away. I had never talked to her about him and vice versa, but she was there with me on the club's first outing. We still have no idea how he found her email slash contact info, since she wasn't even a student at our school. We obviously have similar hobbies slash tastes since we are friends, but we could pass as sisters too. Speaking of sisters, I tell my little sister about him. Turns out he's been physically following her around campus, she started going to the same university that year, and emailing slash phoning her too, on her cell phone, 
so I never knew. She'd even said something about that creepy guy who keeps trying to call me when she'd see a number pop up and just hit end before answering. At this point, I'm super pissed off. This faker is following my sister. She says that he stopped bugging her about a month before, so I'll let it drop. Neither of us have physically seen this guy in a while, so we figure he's moved away. The last part of this story is a confrontation on the bus. I get on my usual route, and he gets on a couple stops later. Turns out he was volunteering at the city's food bank. He launches into a loud spiel, meant to be heard by the entire bus, about how I've been stringing him along, and he's the victim of this twisted romance, blah blah blah, you'd think we'd been dating, and I was using him or something. I'm tired of being sensitive of his feelings, so I tear into him, and basically list off that we never dated, I never showed any interest in him, I told him to his face several times that I was not interested in him, I did not appreciate him emailing and calling me my best friend and my little sister and furthermore, I have called the police about him and that if he ever comes near my little sister again I will do everything in my power to ensure that it is the last time he ever sees her. He goes really pale and says that he didn't realize he was coming on to strong. The man sitting next to him on the bus turns and says you faking stalked this girl and her little sister and you don't think you were coming on to strong? What the fuck is wrong with you? He got up and left and I called the police from that man's cell phone just in case he decided to try something at my house. He knew where I lived too but that was the end of it. I was really apprehensive for about a year or so but it's been almost 10 years so. I always wondered if he learned his lesson and changed his behavior. He wasn't violent at the time, but he was definitely obsessive and that's just a step away, or if his life is a mess. I walk to work every day, along a highway. You can guess the general things I get. Two of the creepiest, it's March, but still snowing and freezing where I live. I'm walking, completely bundled up. My hair is short for a girl, and I'm wearing a hat. I'm so covered I probably wouldn't be able to guess my gender if I saw myself in a mirror. This guy pulls up and asks if I know how to get to the turnpike. I say I don't. He asks if I want a ride. I say no thank you. Started to walk away. He yells for me to come back. Stupid me turns around and he's like no, really, I just think you're cute. Are you Suno? Thank you. And I hurry off. Not too bad, just persistent. A few weeks ago in the sweltering heat I made the mistake of wearing a sundress while walking to work and this man in a convertible slows down traffic to stare me down. He stares into my soul, grinning. I laugh and keep walking. As I pass by a hotel, I see his car in the parking lot. He honks and waves and winks and I panic. I keep walking. He starts to drive out of the parking lot, and I speed walk my goddamned way onto the bridge part of the highway, so he can't talk to me. Five years old, at a playground with my sister and friends. She's maybe nine years old at the time, and this grown man with a mullet comes into the area. He's standing by the monkey bars just staring us down. My sister makes us leave. He just stared a lot. One time I was hanging out with a friend at her apartments, she had her two younger siblings living with her, and it was a summer day, so we were all down at the neighbor's apartment visiting. Her brother had just walked past her apartment, on the bottom floor, and came up to us and asked, who's in the apartment, and we were both like, a no one, and he was like, there's some girl sitting on the couch, so we went to the apartment, and looked slowly around the window to see, sure enough, some girl sitting on the couch with a big duffel bag. She was probably in her early 20s blonde and skinny. We went inside to see what was going on. We say, hey, uh, can we help you? And she said, oh, I'm waiting for someone. And my friend says, well, I live here. Who are you waiting for? Random girl says, uh, a Brandon called me and told me to come here. And she just kept sitting on the couch staring out the window. My friend says, well, there's no Brandon who lives here. Are you sure you got the right apartment number? Random girl says, yeah, keeps staring out window. So after a moment of awkward silence my friend says, well there isn't a Brandon here I really don't know what to tell you. This whole time I'm walking around trying to look like I'm busy, but really just pacing back and forth. The girl didn't even respond to this, she just sat there staring out the window. 
After probably the longest 3 minutes of silence in my life the girl stood up, picked up her bag and left. TLDR. Random hoker in wrong apartment won't leave. I just remembered another creepy thing. In my second year in college the beginning of first semester I was awoken sometime around 6 to 7 am by a knock on my dorm apartment. I opened the door and a guy was standing there asked for Jill, my roommate. I was still a bit groggy, hardly knew my roommates or their acquaintances being that we had just met on the first day of the semester and went to get Jill as the guy, about our age, came into the living room. On my way back from Jill's bedroom I went back to the living room to see the guy standing there jacking off. I was like, what are you doing? Him, Jill said she was gonna give me head. Me, no. I don't think so. Jill also just having woke up was groggily exiting her room. Him, oh, it's the wrong room. Turns out he had tried to do this to more than one room in the hall, and being that it was the beginning of the first semester of the year, our names were posted on the outside of our doors with cute decorations and cheat. This threw me off for the rest of the day, and I'm not sure why I didn't call campus police right away. I was stunned and confused, and still half asleep. I filed a pointless police report later that day. Slept with this dude's chick that's a marine for a while. She breaks it off with him after a month or so. We keep seeing each other for a few months. Then he comes home and she ends up getting with him. So we end up distancing ourselves for a few weeks. Then inevitably hock up again. This time I was a little more convicted and realized I was really serious about this chick and I wanted to be with her. She ends up telling him she needs some time and we see each other for another month or so. After a while, she admits she wants to be with this guy in the long term, and not me. Sucks, was kinda heartbroken, but what can you do? Meanwhile, the dude has been google searching me on a daily basis, I can tell, because he goes to sites that I have javascript trackers on. I mention this to her in bed, and a couple days later, the kid makes up this story that I hacked his Twitter account, made a fake a cupid profile, and posted the link to it on his Twitter account, made some sort of inquiry posing as him to a private investigator in our area, still scratching my head on that one, something about using his ML address on gay born sites or something, didn't get the details on that one, and to top it all off, has one of his buddies from the marines, crank call her posing as an FBI investigator, to question her about the whole situation, our mutual friend's theory on the conspiracy, not mine. Anyways, she ends up believing him, I'm personally fairly confident, that she knows, that it was him, and won't admit it to anyone else, cutting off all ties with me and all our mutual friends, and back with him, TLDR. Don't fall in love with people who have crazy boyfriends. I once had a Down Syndrome woman hit on me. Don't get me wrong, I have nothing against them, but the way it happened creeped me the fuck out. Anyway, I was at work and I'd just finished so sat down to have some dinner. I worked in a pub at the time, is this seems weird. Sat by myself at a table waiting for nom noms, and overcomes this middle aged, ds woman. She asks if she can sit down with me. I didn't want her to sit with me. I was in a bad mood and I didn't want anyone to sit with me. However, I said yes anyway, just to be polite. Anyway, my dinner gets there, and I'm eating it. It's cold and hasn't been cooked properly, but I eat it anyway, cause I just wanna get the fuck out to there. All the time the lady is talking to me, asking fairly normal questions to begin with. What's that you're eating, etc. I'm a terrible conversationalist at the best of times, so my answers are short, as few words as possible. She tells me she'd been to the pub before. Me, okay. Huh, I was raped in one of the toilet. I said nothing. Was in shock. She then continued. Huh, would you like to rape me? Poker face 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 poker face. Me, yeah. I'm actually married. Huh, where is your ring? Me, I must have left it in my other pants. Yes, I actually use this excuse. I stood up, left over half of my dinner, suddenly I felt sick. She just took what was left of my dinner and began to eat it using my knife and fork. I just silent went back to work shifting the beer barrels in the back, checking very cautiously for her whenever I had to take an empty outside. Ten minutes later, a grumpy old man came up to me. 
Apparently, she was now spreading her wares. Can you faking do something about your friend, lad? She doing my head in. I don't know the beach. Then I ran away. Obviously, this story would have been weird if she didn't have Down syndrome, but it just added an extra level of creepiness, in my opinion. The worst part is she was the only woman to ever hit on me. Another story, much shorter and much more recent, happened about a month ago. I was walking home from a friend's house late one night. I passed a little journal, Yorkshire speak for a kind of thin alleyway between houses, and in said journal was an pensioner with his cork out through his fly. He saw me and tipped his fedora knowingly. I said the only thing I could say at this moment in time, cold out tonight, eh, fella? One night a couple years ago, I was 19 I believe, my friend dropped me off at a 7 over 11 by my parents house and I started to the half mile back to my house. A car drives by me rather slowly, then drives off. I was suspicious, but told myself I was being paranoid cause I may have been slightly skewed. A minute goes by, and the car drives by again, and then a third faking time. This time the car pulls over and the driver, a 30 to 40 something year old busted Mexican lady, says to me you need ride? And I politely declined. She said okay and drove away. I start to enter my neighborhood from the main road and notice a couple over behind me on the shoulder. It's the same faking lady, and she starts to run towards me. At this point I got slightly scared, and was ready to deck this beach. But she slowed down, and said you live in neighborhood. What's your name? I didn't tell her my name, and told her I did live in the neighborhood. She tells me her boyfriend lives in the neighborhood as well, which is bullshit, because Mexicans don't live in my neighborhood. She then asks me you have girlfriend? And I told her that I did. Then she said something, like I like a you assuming she was a hoker. I said no dinero, but then she went in to give me a hug. I pushed her away and told her to get off me, at which point she asked me you know like me. And I replied no, I don't like a you, you're really faking creeping me out lady. She smiled and said next time and left. I felt super freaked out and took a really complicated as route home in case she decided to follow me again. I told my friend the story the next day, went to a different 7 over 11 that night, and her car was parked there, she was inside it, and she waved furiously at me. That is all. TLDR, a Mexican lady, possibly strung out on meth, proposition to have sex with me in the most creepy way ever. I declined. Okay, it's late in the thread, but I'll share one. Sorry for the length. I was about 12 and had a paper route that I did at 5 in the morning. As I was crossing the street, call it X Street, to drop a paper at the only house on that block I see a nation dude, maybe a few years older than me, sitting in a bus stop, think nothing of it. I cross back across X Street past the bus, stop and deliver to the houses in Crescent Y which dumps back out, down the block, on X Street. As I walk out of the crescent there Ration guy, now leaning on a wall along X street, but he's walked down the block, as if to meet me, he's not waiting at a bus stop anymore. As I cross X street again, I glance over, and notice he's got his hand in his running shorts, and he's quite obviously fapping. I got freaked out, but pretended not to notice, and continued on to another street, that looped around to X street. I picked up a huge rock that I put in my bag in case I had to deal with this pervert, but he was gone. I knew enough to tell my dad about it, and he called the cops and one came to my house and I filled out a report. Jump ahead two months, and I'm delivering again, and this time I'm with my little cousin who was hanging out with me for the weekend. Not even thinking about the previous occurrence I send my younger cousin down Crescent Y and I go across X street to that single house. As I'm coming back down the steps I look across the street, and see that same guy in the same bus stop fapping, shorts around his ankles, the windows of the bus stop are opaque, so you can't really see in very well, except through the entrance. I lose my sheet completely, because I know my little cousin is right around the corner. I yelled out hey, and he yanks up his shorts and bolts. I start chasing him and he's gone. There was no way I was catching him. I screamed at him, and told him, if I ever saw him again I'd kill him. He was older than me, and bigger, but I was so pissed off I probably would have killed him. Skip ahead a few years. I'm on my skateboard going to catch the bus by my house. 
get down to X street, and look who's in the bus stop, same faker. He looks up at me, not fapping, and he stands up and walks across the street to a bus stop on the other side of the road, which would take him in the other direction. Any suspicions I had were confirmed by that move, and I cross the street and confront him. I'm now way bigger than him, and he's nervous as sheet. I know he recognizes me. I start questioning him in a sort of polite but direct way on where he's from, where he's going. He tells me he was visiting a friend. He's full of sheet because I know nearly everyone in my neighborhood. I tell him he looks like a pervert that I chased back in the day. He goes white. I pick up my skateboard, stick the nose of it about an inch from his face, and say don't ever come back to this neighborhood or I will faking kill you and punctuate ever word with a tap of my board to the bridge of his nose. He looked like he was going to cry and just said okay man, okay man, I'm sorry man, okay faking creeper. Probably should have killed him then, because chances are he continued the behavior. One Friday night, me and my mom had just come back from supper, and it was fairly late, around 10.30pm or so. As we are turning the lights on throughout the house, I hear this devilishly creepy laugh outside one of the windows in the front room. Me and my mom freeze and my mom slowly walks out to the front yard, but no one was there. To this day, I have no idea what slash who it might have been. Another one. About the time I was 15, I would always fall asleep on the couch because my bed was incredibly uncomfortable and the couch was that of a cloud. Anyways, my mom was not feeling good this night, so she had fallen asleep in one of the chairs in the front room. As we are just talking, this absurdly bright light fills the front room. Talking stops, and both of us watch the windows fill with some light from outside. At first thought, and out of fear, we blow it off as someone playing a joke. But no. This was the type of light you see in alien movies. It wasn't car lights, nor a flashlight. This happened three separate times. No one else in my neighborhood reported anything weird the next morning or mornings. My freshman year in high school I started talking to a guy after school whom one of my other friends had previously dated that same year. We ended up talking a lot on the phone for about a week or so straight, and one weekend I invited him to my house to just hang out in the backyard. We decided we'd become a couple, this being either a Saturday or Sunday, I can't remember. The following Monday at school, he presented me with a single red rose, but I just felt off about being his girlfriend. I spent the whole day carrying around this rose, knowing I actually didn't feel up to being his girlfriend, and dreading the phone call that I know we wound end up with that night. He calls and I tell him the truth, that I just can't be his girlfriend, because it doesn't feel right to me. He has an emotional breakdown over the phone, and I'm really a little freaked out, worried about him, and subsequently about me since, well, who freaks out about being dumped after just a couple of days of high school dating? I pretty much ignored him for the rest of the year at school, but he didn't ignore me. He would constantly call the house. Thankfully my younger brother's voice was in the weird in-between stage of puberty so when either of us picked up the phone, we sounded similar, if not exactly the same. If he asked for me, thinking it was my brother, I'd lie and tell him no, she's not here, and I'd have my brother tell him the same. One day during a meal break at school, I was retrieving a drink from a vending machine with a friend when one of his friends slash lackers comes up to me with a CD booklet from a Nike album, of which he was a huge fan, that he had taken our photos, cut out our faces, taped his to one of the hatchet men chasing another guy, who had my picture taped on too. At first my heart dropped, and fear set in, but I was over his shenanigans, took the booklet from the friend, and ripped it in two, and sent it back to him. His friend just said omg he's going to be so mad you ripped his booklet. I probably should've kept the booklet and turned it into a teacher or something like that. That is probably one of the creepiest and kind of scary things that's happened to me that sticks out in my mind. Oh man. So as a silly 13 year old, I was in a chat room with a few friends, trailing it up. So then these two other trolls come in. Now imagine two trolls trolling a few other trolls. It started getting pretty nasty, and so this she gave me my information, name, address, etc. Then I asked her to give me a name of one of my friends, and she gave me a correct one I started to become scared sheetless. 
she's telling me how she has ruined people's lives and crap, and as a 13 year old, I had no choice but to believe her. Cut to 30 minutes later, this beach is in her MSN chat room with me and one of my friends. She says I will forgive you if you take a picture of yourself with the word sorry I can't remember her name. She also was kind enough to show me pictures of other people who had written the same things. However, despite her just one time, I made sure to smile in my picture. Unlike the other pitiful ones who looked like they were about to break down and I wrote it in highlighter, so it washed off really easily. Easily the creepiest slash scariest moment of my life. TLDR. Some internet beach threatened to bomb my house and made me say sorry by writing on myself and taking a picture. Not me, but friends of mine I went to school in India it was a university right by the ocean it was a tradition of sorts in your final year before you graduated to walk all the way along the beach to this spot 12 miles away where a river met the sea. So this bunch of 5 guys decide to do the trip at 2am so that they'd reach the destination in time to watch the sun rise the beach is notorious for drug trafficking but generally no one bothered a bunch of ragtag college boys so they were pretty much safe. And all of a sudden this nearly 7 foot tall muscly fisherman with a handlebar moustache jumps in front of them from nowhere and starts challenging them to fight then he grabs the neck of this guy who had a beard and started strangling him the rest of them start trying to fight him off but are no match for him even though he's outnumbered then he sees that another of the five has a beard and rippling muscles and grabs hold of him and starts strangling and beating the sheet out of him. They wonder what's going on, try to surrender the meager contents of their pockets, hoping he's only trying to rob them then he sees a college ID and stops the hitting and strangling his entire demeanor changes. He strangely becomes friendly. He says I thought you folks were terrorists with your beard and stuff and walking about at this time in the night like you're just off the boat from Pakistan. And he accompanied them on the rest of their walk to make sure they were safe. After hearing that story, none of us dared to go to the beach after nightfall until we graduated. Girlfriend woke up in the middle of the night screaming snake in a half garbled sleepy voice. I immediately gave a sleepy curry and punched the pillow she thought was a snake out of reflex. She woke up, kissed and thanked me for being there for her and promptly went back to sleep. I did not sleep that night. Oh, no I did not. At the time we lived in a sketchy neighborhood and had already had our home robbed once. I truly believed someone was attacking her slash us. So for the following 6 hours I was filled with adrenaline and listening to every creak, moan and ominous fetched that resonated from the rafters. Thin ceiling. I was at a party when I was about 12 to 13 and just faking around playing Halo for the most part. Go upstairs my friends friends brothers friends are playing Star Wars Monopoly, so I naturally join in. We all have fun things get loud, and then this Asian dude grabs the waistbands of my shorts, stretches them wide and looks at my dick. Just stands there for a second, looking at my dick hands almost in my pants. I ignore it, and the night continues as a wonderful frag fest, though sometimes I turn my mind to that day, and ask myself would no homo have been appropriate. I was about to comment on the gap between an old pervert holding a kid's hand in a waiting room and said pervert abducting the kid from the waiting room to do god knows what. However, that is not the point I'd like to discuss. More important I find the over reaction of your mother. Adults should keep their cool as much as possible when faced with possible child abuse. For the sake of the child, often things can get aggravated by the reactions of adults. Something that might have been merely an awkward or unpleasant experience at first can turn into a full-blown trauma with corresponding disturbed sexual development and self-esteem issues for a child simply because of the stigma and reactions to abuse victims. Now I'm not trying to attack your mother, it doesn't seem like you were severely traumatized by the event. My point is more general, when faced with abuse act and think on behalf of the victim, stay calm, understanding and supportive. Of course your mother was right to intervene and call the police, however what's most important is the interest of the victim. It is more important than your own emotions and perceptions of an event. TLDR. When faced with abuse, the interest of the victim is more important than your own. Be calm, caring and supportive. P.S. I'm sorry if this derails your topic, 
However I believe it's important to create more awareness about child abuse, the stigma surrounding it, and how to act when faced with it. Spooky creepy. I sleepwalk. More so when stressed. I'm also a big fan of horror films. Couple of years ago I was doing exams in uni. Stressed. Overtired. The usual. Watched a film before bed to unwind. Can't remember the name. But it involved a ghost rearranging people's furniture and stuff to try and communicate. Woke up to find I'd emptied out my change jar and made an arrow on the floor pointing to the blank wall. At least. I hope it was me. Oh seat creepy. My parents were big drinkers, so I spent a lot of barely supervised time in pubs growing up. When I was about 12, we'd go down to the local, they'd sit in the bar drinking, and I'd go hang out in the side room practicing pool. This one guy in his 30s kept coming to play with me, talk, buy me drinks, that kind of thing. He was a teacher, so no one thought anything of it. But he creeped the hell out of me. I saw him in town a few times, and he kept offering me lifts. I said no, I'd rather walk. He started bringing stuff to the pub for me. Magazines, burned CDs of bands I'd mentioned, that kind of thing. Couple of months later he was arrested for molesting multiple students, all boys my age. I broke up with a girl after nearly two years of dating. She took it really bad, threatened to kill herself on the way home. Tried some nonsense with a razor in my bathroom, etc. Eventually she decided to drive home, but she lived about an hour away. Given that she had threatened numerous times to crash her car on the way home, I wasn't exactly thrilled that she was leaving on her own, but she refused to be stopped. I called her dad and let him know about everything, and then waited for him to call back and confirm that she had arrived safely. I ended up calling him back numerous times while she was still en route, but after nearly two hours she finally arrived at home. After spending so much time super tense, waiting to hear about whether or not she had killed herself over our breakup, I needed a drink. Went out, met a few friends at a bar, celebrated, she was not generally well liked among those close to me, you can probably guess why. Came home around 3am fairly drunk, and promptly passed out. At 6am I was woken by someone standing over me. At first I thought it was my sister, but when my eyes adjusted I realized it's the recently ex-girlfriend. I had forgotten that she had a key to the house, and so didn't get it back when we broke up. So now it's 6am, I'm pretty much still drunk, and this girl is standing over me crying. Not sure if slash how long she was there while I slept. In the instant, when I realized it was her standing there I genuinely feared for my life. After that things got more sad than creepy. She sat down beside me and asked if there was any way to work things out. I said no. She cried some more and eventually left. For the record she wasn't a terrible person, just had some serious dependency issues. I was doing a boxing workout in an elementary school parking lot. It was spacious, empty, and had good lines for drills. A guy approached me who I had met before, briefly conversed, and it turned out he used to box golden gloves. He invites me in for a beer, I could tell he was lonely, and I felt bad for him so I obliged. We talk for about an hour, and being the sense that I was and still am, slightly more mature and reserved now, our conversation gets slightly sentimental. I admit that I'm lonely too, and that I could tell he was, which is why I decided to come over. My hand was on the table, and he grabs it. He starts rubbing it tenderly. That just made me shiver. In my naivety I assume he is just a touchy guy, and don't pull away. He asks me if I know what he is doing right now. I reply trying to make me feel less lonely, nervously. Then he told me he is trying to show me affection. I'm like ah, okay. A little banter, and then he asks me when was the last time I had master, baited. I told him it had been a couple months, because I had believed in the old wives tale that it would help my performance. A little more useless banter as a sequitur, and he asked me if I had ever had a massage. I told him no. After a few moments he asked, would you like one? Of course I said no. Then I made an excuse, and said I had to go. Most people probably would have put their foot down sooner, but I used to be overly nice, and it happened so fast that I didn't know what was going on. He asked for a hug before I left, and I gave him one ready to strike him if he tried anything funny. 
He watched me walk to my car with longing in his eyes. Not my story, but my girlfriend's. I don't think she'd mind me posting here as we kinda giggle about it now. We used to have this guy ring our house all the time and just breathe down the phone. As I usually picked it up, I'd just put it back down again and think nothing of it. One day my girlfriend picks up and the guy asks for her name. She naively tells him. She a nice kinda girl with no bad intentions for anyone and just expected it for be a telemarketer or the bank or something. The guy just hung up. For the next couple of months he would ring up over and over again asking for her. I'd put the phone down. We just stopped answering the phone and at one point we just disconnected it from the wall. No idea why we didn't just report it to the phone company. We forgot we had voice mail set up on the phone line and one day we remembered. We checked it and had the guy proclaiming his love for my girlfriend. He had quite a thick Pakistani accent and kept saying things like I want to kiss you and but I love you, my darling. I decided to try to track the calls, so I plugged the phone back in and waited for another one of his calls. I dialed 1471, a automated robotic voice caller ID in the UK, and found the number. It was an international dialing code originating in Pakistan. We just left it for a while and kept laughing at his voice emails as he got more and more desperate to speak to his darling. In the end he just gave up and stopped calling. When I was 7, I was hanging out with my friend, also 7, and my little brother would have been 5. For some reason, my friend's mom dropped the three of us off at this local nature trail and let us hike around on our own. That's not the creepy part, though in hindsight that's really crazy. It was a nice day and there were other families hiking around. Somehow we started playing with this other family who had a couple kids with them. We were all playing hide and seek, and the dad of that other family was the one hiding. All of the kids were looking for him, and we found him behind a tree. We started yelling here he is, here he is. He got irritated with us, and there so happened to be a bridge nearby. It was dry, hadn't drained much, I guess. So instead of water below the bridge, there was just jagged rocks and boulders. The bridge was high up. I distinctly remember this guy picking my 5 year old brother up by his ankles and hanging him over that bridge. And shaking him up and down and laughing maniacally. And me and my friend just standing there like what the hell. And my brother screaming for his life. If the dude had dropped him, he'd have died. Instead, the dude eventually put my brother down and the three of us ran away. Thinking back, this guy must have been drunk or high or something. Very weird situation. To be 7 years old and watch some stranger hold your 5 year old brother over a bridge and there's not a thing you can do about it. Now that I'm 32 and my brother is 30, this story gets trotted out around the family dinner table at holidays. It's funny now, except to my poor mom, who is horrified every time. I was reading through this thread, thinking man, nothing that creepy has ever happened. When suddenly a memory returned. And, man, is it freaking creepy in hindsight. So, I was around 14 or 15 at the time and quite the avid AOL user. I'd often be in several random chat rooms, I can't even remember what I'd be talking about. Probably the typical a slash s slash l shenanigans. After months of this, there was one particular experience that I completely brushed off, considering I had forgotten all about it. Some random user rhymed me privately in a chat room. We got to talking, and the person identified themselves as being a slightly older teenage model. Pictures were exchanged, and this girl was smoking. We talked for a few hours about all kinds of things, and suddenly this girl asks me hey, I'm going to go skiing in Colorado in a couple of weeks. You should join me. I didn't really know how to respond, so I simply said something like oh, thanks, but there's no way I could afford that, and my parents wouldn't let me out of school. So far, just kinda a. But then the girl states that she'll pay for everything and I just need to make sure I'm on the plane. My parents will forgive me and will understand. She then gives me a phone number to call so we can talk on the phone. Before I come out, I had the number written down in Notepad. Friggin Windows 95. Just upgraded from 3.114 work grabs and shut the computer down later without remembering to save the file. Anyway, I remember being totally devastated that I forgot to write the number down and call. 
But, again, in hindsight now, I know that the entire thing was a trap and it creeps me out to think about it. I was a stupid teenager, and was seriously considering just jumping on a plane and going, if the person sent tickets slash money. I used to work at a dance store that sold dance costumes, leotards, ballet shoes and the like. I don't recall every word, but I'm going to type the creepiest phone call I ever got their conversation style for brevity's sake. Caller, hi, do you carry lamb's wool? That's what ballet dancers use to pad the toes of point shoes right? Me, yes we do, along with some other padding options as well. It's $7 a box. See, I need it for my girlfriend. She's actually a double amputee, and she wants it to pad her stumps. M. Oh, I'm sorry. She should probably ask her physical therapist what he would recommend. C. Oh don't be sorry. She's got her legs. Her feet were removed at the ankle. She actually wants to cut the toe box out of a point shoe and use that to walk on. M. Sir, I would absolutely not recommend that. She will almost certainly be injured. Here's where it gets creepy. C. Actually it was a voluntary surgery. Heavy breathing starts. It's so beautiful. Voice becomes gravely, growl-like, would you ever have that done? That's when I realized this sick fuck was calling me at work to use me as a masturbatory tool for his amputee fetish. I felt violated as hell, like he conversation raped me. The conversation was much longer than this. He kept me on the line for a while to talk about the details of the amputation before getting specific. I hate this man for taking away my power and making me unwittingly get him off. This didn't happen to me, but a friend of mine. So, my friend was in Vegas, and she went out to the clubs like most girls do. While at the club she met a guy, and started dancing with him. Eventually they started making out. He asked her to come back to his room, and she said she couldn't leave her girls or something like that. So he gave her his room key, and told her to come if she wanted. She never saw him again. A day or two after she got home she noticed she had a strange rash on her face. Naturally she went to the doctors to see what was up. When she showed the drive they took a swab of it and said it would take a short amount of time to determine what it was. A little bit later the police show up and start asking her questions. It turns out that the rash is something you can only get from being in contact with dead bodies. The police asked her questions about who she came into contact recently and she remembered the guy from the club. She still had his room number, key and his name. She told them all of this, and a few days later she was informed that they arrested the man. It turns out that he would seduce women in clubs and bring them up to his hotel room. The police found three women's bodies stuffed in the mattress. He would bring the women back, murder them, then have sex with their dead bodies. If it were up to me, I wouldn't be caught dead with a necrophiliac. HMM. Well, let's see. When I was about 16 I was an extremely stupid teenager. I lived about a mile from my high school and usually walked to and from school. One particular day, I was walking home and it was really hot. Some guy drove up to me and asked if I wanted a ride. This is where the stupid teen part comes and I got in the car with him. He didn't look creepy or anything, but it didn't take me long to think what the hell am I thinking? Why did I just get into a car with a complete stranger? To try and sort of rectify my stupidity, when he asked where I wanted to go, I said home, but had him drive me to my boyfriend's house instead, who incidentally lived on the same street as me. It was all I could think of at the time. We drove down the street and passed a particular house that this guy pointed out to me and said was where he lived. He then went on to tell me not to worry, he wasn't some creep who was going to rape me or anything, but the whole time he was talking there was something off about him. He talked very fast, laughed for no apparent reason, and he was extremely fidgety. Looking back, I'm pretty sure he was high on meth or something. Anyway, he dropped me off at my B slash F's house and everything turned out okay, but sometimes I wonder what might have happened. And after that day, when I would pass the house this guy said was his on my way home from school, the car he'd been driving was never there, and there was no garage or anything where it would have been out of sight creeps me out when I think about it. The other incident wasn't nearly as creepy. I think I was around 19 and my boyfriend at the time and I were having sex in a church parking lot late at night on the hood of my car. 
There was a row of houses beyond the church, but we were fairly far away from them, so I wasn't really worried. Eventually I noticed someone with binoculars pointed in our direction. No idea how long he slash she was watching us. At least they got a good show. Don't know how to approach this one. Nevertheless, I was in grade 10 and crushing on a girl hard. She was beautiful in every way known to man. During summer break I saw her down at the local mall. It was great. She was wearing short shorts and a low cut shirt, instant bonner. I quickly ran to the supermarket and bought some resealable plastic bags, the big kind. I trudged off to the toilet and pinched off a massive loaf. This was a surefire way to get her on top of me. I wrote a little note saying something along the lines of for you zuck so I left the sheet bag on the hood of her mom's car and hid behind a couple of other cars, watching and waiting until they returned. They did return and both screamed in horror, tossing the bag in my general direction. It splattered on the hood of the car I was hiding behind and a little bit got on my face and arm. As soon as you got home I had a furious wank and felt never the better. TLDR. Pooped in a bag. Got poofling afterwards. Played video games for the rest of the afternoon.